people that you are. Micah 2 10. Give it to us, please. Ah. Micah chapter 2 and verse 10. This is a prophetic word for someone. It just came to my spirit now. Read it from the depth of your heart. Are you ready? One to read. Arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest. Because it is polluted, it shall destroy you, even with a full destruction. If you remain at that level, it will destroy you. Arise, it is not your rest. This is not your place. You are an eagle. Stop dwelling around with chickens. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and pray this scripture in one minute. Lord, I arise. I arise. It's time to arise. This is not my rest. I arise. I depart from this level. I arise in the name of Jesus. Spiritually, I arise. Financially, I arise. As touching the greatness that you have placed upon my spirit, I arise. Someone pray, this is not my rest. This is not my rest. I refuse to settle for less. Man of God, pray. Thank God for what God has done. So find your ministry, but this is not your rest. Evangelist, pray, this is not your rest. Prophet, pray. Politician, pray, this is not your rest. Professional, pray, this is not your rest. Please pray, this is a miracle service. You are praying yourself to a new level. This is not my rest. In business, this is not my rest. I'm touching the call of God. What I saw in my vision is yet to happen physically. I will give him no rest because this is not my rest. Financially, this is not your rest. Listen, listen, look up everybody. What does it take to live where you are to the next level? On the part of God, power, on your part, anger and hunger, two things. Anger and hunger are required ingredients to break through your current season. If you are not angry enough, you will remain there, giving excuses. And if you are not hungry enough, you cannot be filled. Man of God, you will remain at that level of the anointing. Praying for 100 people and having only one person getting healed. It won't work that way. The nations won't place a demand upon you that way. That is the honest truth. Professional. Uh -uh. Not at that level. Someone is going to pray. Father, I am tired of this level. I am both angry at this level. Thank you for this level. But Lord, I know that I am overdue. When a baby stays more than nine months in his mother's womb, it calls for concern. When a baby stays in his mother's womb, if it is before nine months, that's fine. The baby has to be patient. But above nine months, doctors will tell us there is a problem. Lift your voice and pray. Bring the performance of God at another level. 
bring a performance in ministry. Bring a performance in family. Bring a performance in my finances. Bring a performance in my destiny. Empowerment from heaven. The grace that turns dreams to their reality. Outside are you praying? Inside are you praying? Holy Ghost coming upon your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please listen. When God answers your prayer, how does He answer it? By giving you power. God answers prayer by sending power. The power that turns that desire to its reality. Now listen, I'm going to pray on your prayer request, but before I start ministry, you are going to pray on it by yourself and declare that, Lord, in this season, this and that and that, make your request known as you pray. Please do not keep quiet. And don't say God cannot do it all. Don't entertain unbelief. You don't have to lift it up. Even if it's written somewhere, you just begin to pray. Mention everything by name. Father, it is within your power to make great. It is within your power to prosper. It is within your power to lift. Someone pray. Hallelujah. Please hear me. Listen carefully, please. In the name of Jesus. Can I tell you? I know definite times in my life where certain levels of empowerment came and I knew the change. When we started this work, you see, and I say this with every sense of responsibility and humility, as at the time this work started, this thing called the power to get wealth was not there. There were ideas. I was reading materials and learning because I knew that doing ministry with integrity will need resources. And I didn't want to go around inconveniencing people every day. God's people will give but church can't be about money every time. And then you can't be demanding money from people and not release the grace that empowers them. Do you know, let me tell you, when the anointing of God rests upon people who truly love you and they are blessed, you don't even have to ask them for anything. They will be too grateful to live. They will never allow you to beg for tea and bread. Not with them. There are people who have the hearts to give. Listen, something is about to fall here right now. That's why I want you to listen. I remember praying and studying. I had learned principles and a day came, I had to study the life of Abraham, David, and study these people. I said, I found a missing link. I was already anointed though, but just because you have, the anointing is not like a general purpose tool. Uh -uh. The anointing is assignment specific. The anointing for prosperity will not bring healing. No. Their allocations are different. 
You can have a first aid box with many drugs. They are all called drugs. You cannot carry the drugs for high blood pressure and swallow it for headache. You are causing trouble. The design, they are all drugs. You go to a doctor, a professional, and he will diagnose you. Oh, you have malaria. He will give you the drugs for malaria. Even if you have malaria and another sickness, most times doctors will choose which one to treat first. When you are fine, they will change the drug and treat the other thing. Many of you have received many impartations. You can know the one that is missing. This night, don't keep quiet. But as far as God spoke to me, oh, this issue of the power to prosper, I've done teachings on prosperity. Many of you have given. But I want you to be angry. Know that God is able to help me. You are Ebenezer. Ah. You are Ebenezer. This I know about the helper of man. You are Ebenezer. You are Ebenezer. Listen. You are Ebenezer. The lifter of men. You are Ebenezer. God can help men. Stop struggling alone. You are Ebenezer. You are. I remember praying and crying to God and saying, Lord, this work is enormous. The apostolic and the prophetic ministry requires a lot. Let this grace for God's sake come upon my life and also come upon this vision. The power to prosper can be on you as a man of God and not be on your ministry. You will prosper while the ministry suffers. The power to prosper can be on the ministry and not on you. The ministry will prosper and leave you to suffer and you will start compromising. Can I tell you this? When that grace came, with all due respect and honor to Jesus, I knew it has come to stay. The Bible says, listen, it says on the day of Pentecost, all of a sudden they saw what looked like cloven tongues and it came and rested or sat. It didn't visit and go back. There are graces that can sit and rest on you. When it stays on you, that is it. I submit to you with all humility, every devil and every principality from hell knows that this is the ministry God has held. The ministry is not the building, the ministry is you. And you must answer that name this night. In the name of Jesus Christ. It does not matter what spirit of poverty has tied down people in your family. You saw people educated to PhD, but they could not build a single house. That is a wicked spirit. When your level of intellectual investment does not match your financial rewards, something is wrong with that equation. And then number two, we are going to pray that God will move us. Do you know, let me tell you this. Any sincere man of God who loves his people, your greatest joy is not your personal testimony. If someone buys me a car today, or buys me a plane, or builds me a house, thank God for all of that, but that is not really the testimony I'll come and share here. My greatest joy today is to sit down and hear people saying, I came from a family with nothing, serving idols, and now I am on fire for Jesus, loving Jesus, and see what God has done. That's right. Now, that's a testimony. You must be a wicked leader to rejoice over your results as above and against the people God has sent you to. The real joy of a leader is not his personal testimony. But to know that God's people are growing in leaps and bounds, can I tell you, Man of God, this may be a secret for you to learn. When there are genuine testimonies, not stage managed, not exaggerated, 
genuine workings of God's power in your ministry, it is impossible for that ministry to be empty. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's stable land. A higher place than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. The last prayer, and then it will be a very quick one in this place tonight. Father, I vow that as you cause me to be great, it will not distract my work with you. Rather, it will give me an opportunity to serve your purposes. Lift up your voice and pray that sincere prayer. Someone is praying. Pray and let my God surprise you tonight. Pray and let the one who backs us up surprise you tonight. Lord, that my greatness will not be an interruption to my spiritual life. It will not be an interruption to my love and my fire for you. That is usually the condition. If the nations will see him through your greatness, if the nations will know him through your greatness, then there is no limit to what he can do. If that greatness will not bring pride, arrogance, Hallelujah. I wish I had the liberty to share some of my testimonies. But sometimes we live in a world where people misunderstand everything men of God say. Once you say A, people will say you said A to Z. And it, it turns out to not even edify people again. But I will tell you one or two. Listen carefully. I remember a time when a real estate company came and met me and they said, Sir, God gave us an instruction that everywhere on earth we build an estate that will build a house for you. It's our covenant with God. Anywhere on earth across the globe, for as long as this company exists, just know that anywhere you see us building an estate, I don't know how many estates they have built now across the world. If, if you tell me the power to prosper does not work, think again. Hallelujah. I remember a company of wealthy people who came and met me and said, Apostle, God said we should make you a non-executive board member of this company. What for? What do you people do? This and that and that and that. This is the instruction God gave. So what will be my contribution to your company? That spiritual advantage. You represent the ark of God to our business. I'm sorry, oh, I'm sorry. You see, this is why sometimes some, it's good to say certain things to just help you know that the man standing before you here is not talking nonsense. Let me tell you, if you think this is just a preacher's talk motivating you, think again. I submit to you with all humility what it takes to run koinon, one koinonia service is what many people may use for conferences. Believe me when I tell you. What it takes to run one koinonia service. You've never seen anybody come here to cry, to manipulate, to say this and that. You see, when God sends a word to Jacob, he lights upon Israel. We are not the inventors of these things. We also received it from the carriers. He said, go to them that sell and buy. Hallelujah. Our world today only wants people to brag. Once you are bragging and making noise, doing a lot of things, aha! But once you are modest and humble and you live your life with modesty, sometimes we say these things not to attract conflict.
that every devil in hell knows that till Jesus comes, this ministry will not know poverty. Just believe me when I tell you. No, 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 no. It's not a prayer point. I'm telling you what has happened. It will only be from glory to glory. It's not pride. Please, I'm sorry if it looks like I'm arrogant. I'm only describing for you what must start happening in your life from this night. <laughs> Apostle, I'm coming from a background where nobody knows me. Apostle, right now, as I'm standing here, I'm in debt of one billion, five hundred million. Fine rest. You are not the first to get into debt. Please. There are people who have been into debt of billions of dollars and God brought them out. Fine rest. Can I tell you, for anyone who is owing here, business is not what you use to solve debt. Prophecy. Go and read your Bible. Every time you are in debt, let me save you trouble. It's not doing another business that will bring you out. It is the power of prophecy. Alas, master, for it was borrowed. We are here for you. Come and be part of me. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. Set our hearts on you. So you do what you do. We need a home. Hallelujah. At the count of three, we are going to pray. In fact, please my people hold your hands. Let me start with you before. This is my dear leader. Look at me. In the name of Jesus, may this power to prosper come on you. Take that place right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, by the power that raised Christ from the dead, I release you to strange dimensions of prosperity and increase that people will arise and begin to help you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare by the power that raised Christ from the dead, in the name of Jesus, be shifted to a new level, mysterious dimensions of kingdom wealth, even by the power of God. Now I decree and declare, at the count of three, I want you to shout Jesus. Please bring those under the anointing. Some of you come from families where nobody has risen. My God is about to lift you. Are you ready now? Father, may this anointing, this man to come upon your people. Please bring them out. At the count of three. One, two, three. Shout Jesus. Take that grace now. Take that grace now. Bring them out, please. Take that grace now. I lift you by prophecy. From where you are, I shift you to a new season. Please help us, my God. Please, whether you are an altar or not, just help the altar. We have to hurry up now. Someone's life is changing. I don't care what financial situation. By the power that raised Christ from the dead, such as I have, give I unto you. Step into a new season of prosperity. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Lord, you are changing my life. Changing my story. Please bring them out very quickly. Let's hurry up. If you can, as many as you can. If you can bring them out, that's alright. But we have to hurry up. Someone pray. Don't wait till you fall under the anointing. Open your mouth and begin to pray. A renaissance of financial possibilities. From your lowly estate, my God is lifting you. Hallelujah. Where's Jimmy? Please arrange for him to come and sing that song, The Lifter of Men. Just the chorus. If you you help, whether it's a guitar or whatever. If the keyboardist cannot play, let someone help him very quickly, please. Please bring them out quickly.
Bring them out. My God, something is breaking out here. Outside, inside, those following from any nation, the power of God to lift and to prosper is resting upon you. Hear me. Hear me. Some of you, by reason of this anointing, I'm seeing at least 13 people. At least 13 people. At least 13 people. Your destiny is not even in this country. This is what I'm seeing as God is showing me. Right now, that anointing is going to come upon you. Don't ask me how it will happen. I relocate you now by prophecy. Go to your place of prophecy. Go to your place of destiny. I pick you up from where you are. The land where you must prosper. May my God take you there now. May my God take you there now. watching me. You are outside this nation, but your destiny is in this nation. You are roaming around across the globe and finding out that even when you go to a place of plenty, there is no peace because you must be in your assigned place. I relocate you back to your place of assignment. Can I tell you this? Hear me. Hear me. All through my time of ministry I'd been in Zaria, I'd become so emotionally connected there, but I knew when the season was done for my assignment there. It was a very difficult thing, but I knew that if I do not move where God is moving as far as my assignment is concerned, some of you, this is the simple key you came to receive. You can be roaming about, there are some of you who want to travel abroad, it's not in the blueprint of your destiny. You may visit and come back. But just because you hear that people are roaming around, there are still people suffering in every nation. Don't just emotionally enter the plane and go and die. My life will soon reveal You are the lifter of men Lifter of men I will hold on Hear me. I want to pray for those who are in any kind of financial trouble. What's the power of prophecy bring you out of any financial situation? Hear me. There are people, some of you are owing. Some of you make careless business decisions. And as it is right now, it is only the God of heaven who can lift you. I pray for your spiritual life and I'll pray again. But this night we want to deal with these things. Some of you are under corporate debt. You may not be the individual in trouble, but you are under corporate debt. Your organization is owing all kinds to the millions and billions. 
God can help men. Can I pray for you? Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, by this anointing, anyone here who is in any kind of debt or financial situation, personally, corporately, ministries that are owing and are in trouble, businesses that are owing and are in trouble, individuals that are owing and are in trouble, in the name of Jesus Christ, come out of that debt now! Come out of that debt now! By the ministry of destiny help us, come out of that debt now! Hallelujah. There are spirits that have moved from family to family, ensuring everybody remains poor. A family of everyone educated, nobody working. Everyone educated, nobody. The highest salary may be 20,000. Yes, we are grateful, but that cannot be enough. Now I want to pray. Fire will come upon you. God is going to set you free. Because there are many, hear me. Your salvation tonight is not just for you alone. It's for your family members. There are many of you, I decree and declare, any family here under a spiritual yoke, maybe something happened in time past, and a cause or a pronouncement was made over your family that keeps recycling poverty and financial struggles. Right now at the count of three, Please bring him under the anointing. As you shout Jesus, that altar will catch fire now. Please bring them out. Are you ready? One, two, three, shout Jesus. I break financial yokes. Please bring them out. I break financial yokes. Every spirit recycling patterns of poverty. Every spirit. Whether you are an usher or not, please help us under the anointing. Every spirit, outside, inside, following online, responsible for lack and poverty and want, as the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, and by the blood of the eternal covenant, we set you free tonight. 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 Open your mouth in one minute and begin to pray. I release myself from every embargo. Someone pray. I decree and declare a prophetic release. Every embargo, every yoke, it tied down my father, it tied down my grandfather, it tied down wicked people. I am a righteous man in Christ, and I decree and declare that by the blood of the eternal covenant, I appropriate my healing and my deliverance. One more minute, you are praying. I break free from this embargo. I break free from this embargo. I break free from this embargo. I break free. Financial embargo, I cost you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please look up. By the privilege of God's grace, I've had the honor of meeting and learning from extremely wealthy people. Extremely wealthy people. I am not in ignorance. I submit to you by the privilege of God's grace as to the financial principles and the systems that make for the blessing. This prayer and this miracle service is by no means excusing your, your fortitude to comply with financial principles that bless you. But let me tell you something and let me teach you something. There are only two ways financial resources will enter your life. Only two ways. Number one, value that is exchanged. Number two, favor. That is it. There is no other way financial resources will enter your pocket. Your value packaged and turned into products and services 
garnish with excellence and serve to a, consu- a targeted consumer base. That's what you call business. That is one dimension. But then the other is called favor. I want to show you how God restored Job. Job 42 verse 10. My light will soon reveal you are the lifter of men. The lifter of men. I will hold on through the storm. This is for someone. I will hold on through the rain. My life will soon reveal. You are the lifter of men. The lifter of men. Sing it one more time as a prophecy. That I will hold on through the storm. Ah. I will hold on to the rain. My life will soon be filled. You are the lifter of men. The lifter of men. Can I tell you this? There is no one here under the sound of my voice, or will there ever be, whose situation is worse than that of Job. Let me show you what God can do. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had. Thank God for that, but we want to know how it happened. Are you ready? Next verse. Verse 11. <laughs> read with me if you are a Christian. One, two, read. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Have you seen how God restored him? Number one. Then came to him all his brethren. Every next level and finances you are trusting God for is in the hands of men. Until the men come, you cannot get what is in their hands. It says, then there came unto him. Where were they when he was crying? The Bible says God turned. So how does God turn? He places something upon your life that will start compelling people to start coming. There came unto him his brethren and all his sisters and they that had been of his acquaintance before they were the ones that made him prosper before that means how did poverty come to his life something was taken away from him and everybody left physically how did god restore it something came i'm i'm showing you because something is about to come on you now please read it are you ready one to read then came there unto him all his brethren, uh-huh, and all his sisters, and they that had been of his acquaintance before, and did eat bread with him in his house, and they bemoaned him, and comforted him over all the evil that the Lord had brought upon him. Now here's the secret, read. And every man, how many men? There is something that comes on you that makes every man bless you. Not just those who do business with you. Every man. Every man. Read on please. One to go. Every man also gave him a piece of money. And everyone an earring of gold. Can I tell you this? Some of you have gone through serious financial hardship. God organized this miracle service to bring financial healing. To bring financial deliverance. And I'm showing you how it happened. Because we are going to pray now. I've taught you the ministry of destiny helpers. These are men anointed, commissioned by God to pay attention to your destiny. Not everyone is a destroyer. There are people who can enter your life like they entered the life of that my gentleman and turn his life around. Who would have told him that a year before or two years before, there were people in that football field before he came. It is what is on you that controls what is around you. Every man gave him a piece of money. Every man gave him a piece of money. And everyone an earring of gold. Father, who have you anointed in this season to hold my hand and move me to the next financial level? I declare, place the grace upon my life that will bring them to my destiny. Open your mouth and pray. Place that grace. 
this is a miracle service. Make sure you are praying. Place that grace upon my life, oh God, that will compel the helpers of my destiny to attend to me. Place that grace upon my life. Forget about where you have been. Pray. I will hold on to the sword. I will hold on to your word. My story is about to change. You are the lifter of men, the lifter of men. Lord, I will hold on to the sword. I will hold on to your word. My life will soon reveal you are the lifter of men. Hear me, believers, in the name of Jesus. Please listen to me. I submit to you by God that there are more than enough people in any city to be used by God to lift you. Nobody will come and lift you on their own. I've told you this. There is the power that rests upon your head. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. In this kingdom, who hates you does not matter. But who likes you matters. Please place your hand on your head. Just place your hand on your head. Father, this is a miracle service where you are sorting people financially once and for all. My God and my King, upon every head, right here, inside, all the overflows, outside, I am praying. Lord, the grace that must rest upon them, that will compel the helpers of destiny to gravitate towards them. In the name of Jesus, may that anointing rest upon you now. May that anointing rest upon you now. In the name of... The mind is the devil's battlefield. But this vessel has mastered the game. A custodian of deep spiritual insight, busting the tricks of darkness and projecting the truth of light. A man of the spirit with an in-depth understanding of kingdom mysteries and principles. A tool of massive life transformation and a vanquisher of weapons fashioned by hell. Prepare to be shot out from where you are to where you are meant to be by the power of the Spirit and the vehicle of His ministration. Investors, let's welcome a gospel general who walks in the supernatural, blesses life in the physical, and is putting the kingdom of darkness on the run. If your hands are not busy and your legs are not heavy, Wine Press 2022, let's welcome our gospel, Joshua Selman. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Good evening, everybody. I am very blessed to be here.
tonight. And I know that our lives will never be the same in Jesus' name. Let me appreciate Pastor Bolaj and his dear wife. Alongside the entire ministerial team, thank you so much. Let's trust God for a very wonderful time in his presence again in Jesus' name. Please lift your hands and ask the Lord for a visitation yet again. Go ahead and ask, pray, let it be from the depth of your heart. Out of my belly shall flow rivers, rivers of living water. Out of my belly shall flow rivers, rivers of living water. Go ahead and bless him as an expression of your hunger and desire for more. In the name of Jesus, speak to our hearts, O God, and let us be changed and changed again. For the Bible says they go from strength to strength as many as appear before the Lord in Zion. Our hearts are open in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Please be seated. I felt stirred in my heart to start tonight with the prophetic word Isaiah 62 from verse 2 and 4. This is a prophetic word that the Lord gave me for someone. He says, And the Gentiles shall see thy righteousness, and all kings thy glory. Thou shalt be called by a new name, which the mouth of the Lord shall name. Verse 3, Thou shalt no more be termed forsaken, neither shall thy land any more be termed desolate. But thou shalt be called Hephzibah, and thy land Beulah. For the Lord delighted in thee, and thy land shall be married. Let it be unto you according to the word of the Lord. In Jesus' name. I'll be giving us a very short charge for a few minutes. And then we'll just trust God as we pray and minister within the time that we have. I'm teaching tonight on rest round about. Rest round about. Joshua chapter 21. Tonight's teaching is an attempt to help us experience the fullness of God in every aspect of our life. Conferences like this sharpen us and help us to experience God in His fullness. So from teaching after teaching, dimension after dimension, all of these dimensions come together to help us experience the fullness of God. Hallelujah. Joshua chapter 21, we'll begin our reading from verse 43. Rest round about. And the Lord gave unto Israel all the land which he swore to give unto thy fathers, and they possessed it and dwelt therein. And the Lord gave them rest round about, according to all that he swore unto thy fathers. And there stood not a man of all their enemies before them. And the Lord delivered all their enemies into their hands. The last verse 45. There failed not aught of any good thing which the Lord had spoken unto the house of Israel. How many came to pass? All. All came to pass. All came to pass. It is possible that the believer walks in the fullness of God's intention as far as the victorious life is concerned. Now you must understand 
that on account, theologically speaking, on account of what we call the finished work of Christ, that is a capture of everything that was wrought for the believer in Christ through his death, his burial, his resurrection, and his ascension. It does not stop at the resurrection. There were things that happened at his ascension. The coronation did not happen at his resurrection. It happened at his ascension. That was where he was given the name Lord. The name that is above all names. Are we together? So on account of these realities, there, there is an implication. If these things are true, if the Bible is not telling a lie, if these things are true, it means that we can experience the fullness and the vastness of the possibilities that come on account of our oneness with Christ. Are we together? When the believer receives the life of Jesus into his spirit, when the believer begins to walk uh, in keeping with the ministry of the Holy Spirit and the Word, there should be a very glaring evidence. There should be an evidence that, number one, you are one with Christ through His Spirit. Number two, that you are led of His Spirit. And number three, that you live by His Word. It is impossible to claim to be a genuine recipient of the life of God. It is impossible to claim that you are walking in total submission and alignment to the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. It is impossible to claim that you submit to the word and your life becomes an ordinary life. There has to be an implication. You don't have to tell people you are that diligent. Your results should speak. Are we together now? The Bible says on account of the exploits of the apostles, they looked at these men and they reckoned that they were unlearned men. But they trace the secrets to their exploits or of their exploits to the fact that they had been with Jesus. So God is able to give us rest round about. It is possible that a, the believer in Christ can experience the fullness of the love, the life, the power of God, the, the influence of the kingdom. It can find expression all through your life and in every aspect of your life. My first question, or my first charge is, why do we need to press to see that the fullness of the power and the grace of God finds expression all through our lives? I'll give you a few reasons. And they are found all in Scripture. Number one is in Matthew chapter 5 from verse 13 to 16. Jesus there was saying, you are the salt of the earth. You are the salt of the earth. This is the first reason why our results and our overall success is good for God and for the kingdom. Because in the excellency of our results, we prove that in truth we are the salt of the earth. Salt means, number one, you preserve that territory from decadence. Number two, you add value to the territory. The primary assignment of salt is to preserve and to add taste. Is that true? And then the Bible says, verse 14, same scripture for sake of time. It says, ye are the light of the world. Ye are the light of the world. This is another reason why our results are important. The definition of darkness is the world or any territory without us. The Bible does not say we have light. It says we are that light. Is that true? It says we are also a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden. Next verse. Neither. That means this should not be that men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light to how many people? That means before the light came, there were still people in the room, but they were in darkness. But on account of that light, the people in the room can now benefit from the presence of that light. Are we together? John 15 and verse 8. Jesus was teaching and he said, Hearing 15 and verse 8. John 15, 8. Hearing is my Father glorified. That means in this, this is how my Father gets glory. That ye bear much fruit. So shall ye be my disciples. That means 
Your results are a defense that you come from me. Are we together now? Herein is my Father glorified that ye bear much fruit. So shall ye be my disciples. Galatians chapter 1 and verse 24. Simple but profound scripture. And they glorified God in me. And they glorified God. That means my life gave God a chance to be lifted and to be glorified. The way God gets glory is by lifting his sons and his daughters. John 17 and verse 1. That is the formula. Jesus lifted up his eyes to heaven, the Bible says. And this is what he said. Father, the hour is come. He says, glorify thy son. Why? To the end that thy son may also glorify thee. So when believers fail to produce the kind of results that justify the all-surpassing power of Jesus, we rob our territories of the opportunity to see Jesus manifest in and through our lives. Apostle calls it the mystery of godliness, that God can be embodied in a man. Are we together? So God desires to give us rest round about, and our results are very important. I, I need to state this before we begin to deal with all the dimensions that God seeks to see us excel, because what gives value to the exegesis of truth, especially the revelation of the believer's victory in Christ and, and uh, the believer's passion for excellence, is that it must be connected to purpose. When you teach people things like prosperity, you teach people things like healing, signs and wonders, the anointing, if you do not connect them to a bigger purpose, it will not profit them holistically. Is that true? So if I prosper, to what end? If I am healed, to what end? If I have influence, to what end? It is important that we understand that all that we are and all that we seek is to one end. John chapter 1 and verse 6 and 7. Never forget, this is, this is the, the ultimate motivation behind our pursuit. There was a man sent from God. His name was you. Not just John. John is God. Are we together now? Next verse. The same came. Why? For a witness. He did not come as a prophet. He came for a witness. To bear witness of the light that men through his witness might believe. That is it. So, my prosperity the excellence that comes from my life, my excelling in career, and whatever it is that comes as an expression of God's power is to one end that men might believe. And the only way men will believe is when Jesus is revealed through that process and when Jesus is glorified. Are we together now? If we do not understand this as simple a concept as it is, we'll be wasting our time doing whatever it is that we do. Jesus revealed, Jesus glorified through my prosperity, through my being healthy. Jesus revealed, Jesus glorified. If that becomes the anthem, the motivation behind everything you do, now the Holy Spirit can so lavishly invest the grace of God upon your life because He knows that the motivation and the goal is intact. That in it, in whatever it is that he does in and through your life, Jesus will be glorified. It is vain to just prosper for prosperity's sake. It is vain to just contend for influence just for the sake of lesser motivations like proving a point and all these kinds of things. It has to be, listen, God vets the degree to which his interest is represented in your pursuit. That, that, that becomes the principal motivation for the attention of the Holy Spirit in your life. To what degree will your excellence and your success represent the purposes of God? Are we together? So most believers want to prosper. We want to excel. 
we want to grow in grace, but to what end? If my prosperity, if I desire to prosper, to increase, if I desire to be a greater man of God by whatever standard in 2022, the question is why? To what end? If it is just for the glorification of the flesh, you miss it with God already. Are we together now? It is the reason why it looks very difficult for God to come through for certain people. It's not because His hand cannot be lavishly outstretched towards the believer. It is the corruption of our motive, largely. So, I need to put that in perspective so that as we seek to excel in every aspect of our life, we will realize and remind ourselves again that this is not just um, for any self-aggrandizement. This is to see Jesus through my life glorified. Are we blessed? That is the correct motivation and the correct position that a believer must take in the pursuit of things like the blessing of the Lord, influence, and all of these things. We must be able to defend our desire and our pursuit. Pray a prayer in one minute before we continue. Ask the Lord to purify your motive. That forever your motive as a believer, the principal motivation behind all you say, behind all you do, will be to see Jesus revealed and to see Jesus glorified. Go ahead and pray. God is blessing us already. He grants us rest round about so that in and through our rest, in and through the excellence that comes from our lives and our results, that Jesus will be glorified and that the nations will see that indeed He is Lord. So pray. Pray. I just want to say thank you. You get the glory. You get the praise. You take the honor. I just want to say thank you. In my life, be glorified. Be glorified. In my life, be glorified, be glorified. So from January up until December, that if there is anything that is worthy of commendation in my life, and in your life, it only becomes a means to a very definite end. To the end that Jesus, through my life, Jesus, through the works of my hands, Jesus, through the excellence of the exploits that comes from and through me, that Jesus be revealed and Jesus be glorified. I have learned that in our walk with God, the moment there is a corruption to your motive, believe me, you will play formulas, you will play principles, and they will surprisingly not work. Because the state of your heart vetoes any activity you do. If it does not lead to the revelation of Jesus, if it does not lead to the enthroning of the Christ in the hearts of men and across any territory, we are only wasting our time. Are we together? Believers, up front, God is calling us to understand the motivation behind His benevolence. The motivation behind His desire to reach down to us. Number one and ultimately is His love for us. But then in addition, you have to understand that God has a program. And that the degree to which we align to see His kingdom come and His will be done is the degree to which He will unashamedly invest in our lives. 
When you look at the mirror, you don't remember the mirror. When you look at the mirror, you remember what the mirror is projecting. If you will let men see me. I can tell you, believers, there are dimensions of grace and favor, power and influence that we have not come close to. That is, is, is in store for us. Only if we can purify our motives to see Jesus lifted. There is this each, you know, the human nature desires to be celebrated. The human nature desires to be at the center of the spotlight. But this is not how it works in the kingdom. There is only one name. There is only one name. With power you say. Not two names. Not ten names. Power to say there is only one name. That's the name we project. That is the name we lift. That is the name we exalt. With power to say. With power to say. Let your entire life be about revealing Jesus. Not using Him to fund your agenda. Not using Him to find and make a name. No. Listen. This bar here, if you can see this, is holding this pulpit. It's impossible to look at the pulpit and ignore the bar holding it. But the focus is not the bar. The focus is this. It's impossible to lift Jesus and be invisible while you do so. But that the motivation is not really you. If I stop here tonight, I'm satisfied. Because this I believe from the authority of Scripture and from, you know, just, just examining believers. It is this one area of total surrender to see Jesus lifted in our lives is very difficult because something within us makes us feel that we will be cheated if we shift out of the stage and let Jesus take his place. Something within us craves for honor, craves for lifting, craves for a name and, and these things are not wrong. God desires to lift us. Remember Deuteronomy 20, chapter 28, 1 and 2. It shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and observe all that I command you this day. He says that you shall be exalted above all the nations of the earth and that this blessing will come upon you and overtake you. So it is not God's desire to keep us low, but that the motivation must be Jesus revealed. I made up my mind that for as long as I live, for as long as I live, there is only one name, there is only one person who will be projected and lifted in this life. It's the determination and it's a covenant that in and through my life, whatever you want to say, Lord, you can say through me whatever you want to do 
Lord, you can do through me whoever you want to live. Lord, you can live through me wherever you want to go. Lord, you can go through me, whoever you want to heal. Lord, you can heal whatever you want to say. As this principle is, you can wake up in the morning and sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of salt. Because except the Lord builds the house, ladies and gentlemen, please hear me, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord watches over a city. He said the watchmen watch it, but in vain. When people rise and they excel in this kingdom, God is the first behind the exploits of men. There are dimensions of results that men cannot produce. It is, it is above the reach of an ordinary man, unassisted, to produce certain levels of results. Are we learning? All that we see and all that we celebrate today in this church and in the life of your man of God, they are attestations that there is a support system. Ordinary men seemingly, but empowered by the hand and the jealousy of the mighty God. Let me just read what I wrote here and then we pray. God is able to help men and God is able to give men rest roundabout. The idea of being successful and finding rest not just when you get to heaven, that God is able to grant you rest, that you look left and right and you see that God has sorted you so thoroughly that all that is left in your life is praise. There is such a thing as rest round about. It says, and Abraham was old and well stricken in age. It says, and the Lord had blessed him in all things, in all things, in all things. Hallelujah. Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. Joshua was receiving an instruction. And guess what the Bible says? Unto Joshua, it says, This book of the Lord shall not depart from out of your mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. In other words, be consistent, that thou mayest observe to do all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and you shall have a kind of success called good success. Good success is success with the future. Good success is success that is not up today and down tomorrow. There can be consistency and predictability to your Christian experience. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The key is knowledge. Knowledge that comes from the Word of God. Listen to me. Results in this kingdom are predicated on the depth and the level of spiritual illumination that we have. Job chapter 38, for sake of time, and verse 33, just write it down. Job was having a conversation with the God of heaven and he said, Knowest thou the ordinances of heaven? Job 38, 33. And canst thou establish the dominion thereof on the earth? Job 38, 33. Knowest thou the ordinances of heaven, it says, and canst thou establish the dominion thereof in the earth? That means, you, do you know what principle by which heaven regulates itself? And can you reproduce that principle in your life here and now? Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6, the prophet began to lament and he said, my people, are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. The lack of knowledge. The lack of knowledge is the reason why my people are destroyed. 
Luke chapter 19 from verse 41 to 42. Twice, Jesus cried and wept twice in the Bible. The first one was at the grave of Lazarus. You find that in John 11 and verse 35, the Bible says Jesus wept. The second reason why he wept was in chapter 41. The Bible says when he was come, or verse 9, chapter 19 and 41 of Luke, when he came, he was come near, he beheld the city and wept over it. Why did he weep? Read with me, 42. One to read, saying, if thou hast known, even thou at least in this thy day, the things which belonged unto thy peace, but now they are hid from thy eyes. This is why Jesus cried. He saw the level of ignorance at a territorial level, that people were in such level of blindness and ignorance, and he went. It takes knowledge to excel. It takes knowledge to be able to capture the realities that are finished in Christ and to make them manifest in our lives. The faith that works wonders in our lives is predicated on knowledge. Is that true? Without knowledge there is no basis for faith because faith it is according to what God has said. He only does what He says. God does not do what you want. He does what you want that is consistent with what He said. If He has not said it, there is no basis for committing Him. Genesis chapter 21, when you read from verse 1 and 2, please give it to us quickly because of time. God does not just say and do things anyhow. He doesn't just, the workings of God has boundaries. He only does what He said. And the Lord visited Sarah as He had said. And the Lord did unto Sarah as He had spoken. He only does what he says. He performs what he has spoken. Are we together? I wrote down here very quickly. I'll just run through them within the few minutes that we have so that we can have, even if it's a minute or two, to just pray. I have found out from Scripture and as I study people who have been greatly used by God in their generations, I found out that to have rest round about, there are six principal areas, six principal areas where you must make tremendous advancement and you must allow the light and the glory and the power of God to shine in those areas. If any one of those areas um, are short of the light and the wisdom and the grace of God, you can never truly have rest round about. Can I run through those areas? Are you ready? Number one, your spiritual growth. The first area where you measure rest, that God can grant a man rest, is in the area of your spiritual life. The area of your spiritual life. The Bible lets us know that you can make progress spiritually and in order of priority. That is the first biblical platform to measure your progress and to find rest. Everything else will eventually fail in your life if your spiritual life goes wrong. Did you hear what I said? Satan does not mind believers failing in their spiritual lives provided they are blinded and even if they excel in any, any other area, he does not care because eventually your life will be a reflection of your spiritual health. Are we together now? In 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 18. 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 18. It says, But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, to Him be glory now and forever. He says to grow in grace and to grow in knowledge. That means we can grow. The believer is not supposed to just stop at the gates of salvation and remain stunted and immature. There is an implication when a believer has, does not have sufficient growth that comes through knowledge. You will never be able to walk in the fullness of your victory in Christ. For the Bible says an heir, for as long as that heir is a child, he said he differed not from a slave, even though he be Lord of all. It takes growth. Luke chapter 2 and verse 52. Jesus himself increased, the Bible says, in wisdom. He increased in stature and he increased in favor with God and with men. We must contend for spiritual growth in order of priority. You will never find rest. You will never.
never truly be able to enter your Sabbath. Remember the Bible speaking about the Sabbath. He said there remained a rest for the people of God. Why didn't they hear his rest? They stepped into his rest. Because when they heard his voice, they did not happen to be. They trivialized it. They did not mix it with faith. There remained a rest for God's people. Your spiritual progress is very important. You must contend for light this year like never before. You must fight ignorance spiritually. You must, you must contend to know Jesus Christ. The Bible says, John chapter 17 and verse 3, it says, This is eternal life, that they may know you, the one true God, and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. The administration of eternal life is progressive. That the more you know Him, the more the wealth and the riches of eternal life finds expression within you. Are we learning your spiritual growth? Let's hurry up number two. The second area you need to contend for that represents the platform for rest roundabout is mental transformation. Please write it down. Mental transformation. Romans chapter 12 and verse 2, here's what it says. It says, and do not be conformed to this world. Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. It says, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So we can change states. We can become greater and superior versions of ourselves. Listen, transformation means sustaining superior belief systems. You must obtain grace from God because the Bible is very clear that as a man thinketh in his heart, interchange for mind. He says, so he will be, or so he is. You will never rise above and beyond your belief system. Many of us are victims of our thinking as sincere and as well-meaning and even as spiritual as we are. When it has to do with excellence and victory in addition to spirituality, you need to have the mind of Christ. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5. It says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. There was a paradigm. There was a perspective. There was a, a, a belief system. Them, a way to think that made Jesus to walk in victory. We have all kinds of belief systems that come from our cultures, our, our past our associations, our levels of exposure. All of these factors help to shape our thinking. And it is in the area of mental transformation that both science and religion agree that you will not be able to make any significant progress if your mind is limited. In Genesis 11, the Bible talks about something there, a story of Nimrod Kush that demonstrates the excellency of thinking. Satan is not mentioned there. The Holy Spirit is not mentioned there. Just men and their thoughts. And yet, God himself gave a testimony in that story that what they have imagined to do, nothing God is speaking now. Nothing will stop them that they have imagined to do. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20 says that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly, far above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us. So our thinking matters as far as manifesting our results is concerned. Are we together? The major, let me tell you this, um, what we call, I, I wish I had the time to deal a bit with the subject of warfare. That the major, did you know that the principal battle of the believer is in the realm of the mind? In the realm of the mind. Number three. The third area where you need to find rest and content for rest this year is in the area of your health and your physical well-being. Don't assume you know what I'm saying. Just pay attention and listen to me. Your health and your physical well-being. 3 John verse 1, chapter 1 and verse 2. It says, Beloved, I wish above all things, above all the things that I've told you, above all the things that I have shown you, I wish that you will prosper and that in your prosperity, your health will also be in place. 
I wish that you may prosper and be in health. Say in the name of Jesus, I will be in health. Do you know why it is important to be healthy? Please look up. The only authorized platform that you have to function in the earth realm is your body. Science has not yet perfected the art of removing a spirit and putting it in another medium to exist. No. If your body deteriorates beyond a certain degree, the spirit will have to leave. There is a requisite level of health mandated for every human spirit to safely coexist with your body. Are we together now? And when Satan wants to administer death, one of the ways he administers death is to deteriorate your body to a point where your spirit can no longer stay and your spirit will have to live in an event called death. This body has to be prepared to host your spirit. A body has thou prepared for me. So no matter how alive you are spiritually, when you lose your body, you have lost everything as far as your function on earth is concerned. It is important. Many people prophesy longevity, but they downplay the very medium that is the principal host. Both your spirit and the Holy Spirit lives in you through your body. The Bible calls your body the temple, not just your spirit. You have a responsibility to stay healthy. And you must obtain grace that like never before, I, I am intentional about living long by staying healthy. Are we together? Your physical well-being is important. How many dreams have been shattered at the instance of certain illnesses and certain bodily conditions? Great dreams. Mighty men and women. Imagine if Jesus was sick all through his 33 years. There would be no salvation. It took health to move from place to place preaching. Imagine if the apostles... Listen, there were many apostles who had potentials, but they sadly, because they died early, like Apostle James, like Stephen, the Messiah, only God knows what else he would have written that would be captured in the Bible. Dreams that just went. Don't just concentrate on your spirit. Pay attention to your body. Everything you do that administers death to your body, from your eating to carelessness, you must obtain grace to drive it far from you as a commitment that you intend to live long. Number four. Are you ready? The second area where you must excel and find rest is in the area of purpose and destiny. Please write it down. Purpose and destiny. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 7. You must be able to give definition and meaning to your living. Do not allow situations and circumstances to just navigate you through a path of short-term relevance. And then you are now confused, escorting men along the corridors of destiny without having a definition for your life. Here's what the Bible says. Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book, it is written of me, to do thy will, O God. I'm not here gallivanting around this place called earth. I am here with a definition for my life. Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 5. This was a conversation between the young boy Jeremiah and the Lord himself. And here's what he said. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and ordained thee to be a prophet to the nations. Everyone here by God was born for a reason. And let me tell you something about purpose. Purpose and destiny is like a relay. Someone depends on your living purpose to find his own purpose. So when you, when you do not find your place in life, you not only hurt your own destiny, you stop others who are depending on your own discovery. Imagine if your pastor did not find his place in life and destiny. You see that? 
Because in this kingdom, it's in His light that we see light. It does not just apply to God alone. Even in your light, others see light. We just read it. That there are people in the room and that room is dark. Depending on the one who brings light. Imagine how many more apostles will rise when you rise. Imagine how many prophets will rise when you rise. Imagine how, mo how many more entrepreneurs will rise when you rise. When you don't rise and live up to purpose, you don't just rob yourself, you rob the program of God. Purpose and destiny. Finding your place is very important in life. It gives you the legitimacy to say no to many things. Purpose gives you constraints that are healthy. If you do not find your place in life, you do not have a basis to say no. At the end of your life, there are only three things that will matter. Number one, your relationship with Jesus. Number two, your family. Number three, your assignment. Ultimately, these are the three things that sustain the power to give you fulfillment. You must this year know how to, to, um, to arrange your life in a way and a manner that you do not major on minors and then minor on majors. Is God speaking to us? Purpose and destiny. Acts chapter 26. Acts chapter 26. Let's hurry up. From verse 14. We'll read to 19. This was Paul making his defense before King Agrippa. Follow carefully as I read. And he says, he's, he's narrating his experience now. When we were all falling to the earth, I had a voice speaking unto me, saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the prince. 15. And I said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. Verse 16. Ready? Let's read together. One to read. But rise and stand upon your feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness, both of these things which thou hast seen, and of those things in the which I shall appear unto you. 17. Delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles, unto whom I now send thee, to open their eyes, and to turn them from darkness to light, and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins, an inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith. May 19 be your verse. Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly calling. It's not an earthly calling. I was not disobedient, constrained by the awareness that heaven sent me. This is what I am up and about doing. Is someone learning? You cannot find rest just when you have money or when you have all of these things. One of the indices, psychologically speaking, psychologists tell us that there are about six indices that make for fulfillment. One of it is impact and contribution. You find fulfillment to the degree to which you know your life is counting as far as making impact and contribution is concerned. May this be the year that you don't just clap for people for doing great things for God, but that your life also becomes part of that drink offering. Number five, are you learning? The fifth area that you must contend to find rest in roundabout is the area of finances. Access to the supplies of heaven, access to resources. Psalm 35 and verse 27. Very quickly, Psalm 35, 27. Let them shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous cause. Yea, let them say, how long? Continually. Let the Lord be magnified, which had pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. God desires for us to be blessed. 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 9. It says, Ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, 2 Corinthians 8 and verse 9, that though he was rich yet for your sake, 
he became poor that ye through his poverty might become rich. Don't be ashamed to receive it. You know to what end now. That with that prosperity as a tool, you are not only comfortable, but it gives you the opportunity to reveal Jesus. You may have heard me say it, that the weight of Jesus is heavy. It takes prosperity to lift him. It takes more than just a desire. Next time you sing that song, we lift you high, think of what you are saying. You must have in place all the tools that make for lifting him high. Second Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 8. Very classic scripture on a balanced viewpoint for obtaining and contending for um, the supplies of heaven. And God is able to make all grace, all grace abound towards you that ye always having all sufficiency in all things you use them as tools to abound to every good work. That means you cannot abound to every good work when you have financial deficiencies. Are we together? Now, most people love the idea of money because they hate suffering, which is a very justifiable reason, by the way. But then more than that, you must desire to see Jesus glorified. And it should drive you to uh, personally I hate the idea of poverty because of its power to limit kingdom come. If poverty were neutral, I would not have a problem with it. But it is not neutral. It can limit you. Books that can bless nations constrained by resources. Children that can be raised to become champions, to be sent to good schools constrained by finances. You have to see the evil in poverty and lack and insufficiency to really want the blessing of the Lord. With all due respect to people who may be struggling financially, it is evil to desire to remain poor. It is not just bad, it is evil because you are in direct partnership with Satan to frustrate the program of God. I believe that being glad over poverty, don't confuse what I'm saying, being happy and being, being joyful to remain in poverty is worse than occultism. Because one of the principal constraints to the advancement of the gospel, as far as the world of men is concerned, is the availability of financial resources. Can you imagine that in our world today, the world is immersed in about, the world is about 70 to 75 percent water, and yet there are people today who don't have water. Yet the whole world that we are, the whole world we are, that architect called poverty, that in spite of the fact that the world is surrounded by water, it can channel individuals to an area where they literally will die of thirst. I pray that through my life and your life, God will be able to grant us greater resources in this season, in this, in this season, to do so much for the kingdom. In the name of Jesus Christ. Can I tell you this? One of the assignments of poverty is delay. It was the delay of the bridegroom that made the oil to finish. If the bridegroom came early, all ten would not have a problem. Poverty can make time pass, and yet the events that should happen in time don't happen. If someone is to write Wayek this year, and because of lack of resources, he writes it five years from now. No, something has happened to him. Listen, the blessing of prosperity is not that it comes, it that it comes when needed. You have to understand that there is timing to wealth. Wealth can come late. This is a chart. Sit down. Number six. One last word on this prosperity thing I just said. Finance. Please, in the name of Jesus Christ, refuse poverty. You, you, don't feel 
guilty and don't feel that refusing poverty or um, embracing prosperity is promoting carnality. No, that is, that is a misguided understanding by ignorant people who are not doing much for the kingdom. Are we together? Say unto God, how terrible, he says, um, Zechariah 1, 17, Cry yet, saying, Thus saith the Lord, My cities to prosperity shall be spread abroad, and I will comfort Zion. He gives us the power to prosper. Deuteronomy 8, 18, Thou shall remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee the power to prosper. Do you know what it means to be wealthy? I hope you know that being wealthy and being rich are two different things. Do you know the difference? Listen, to be rich means to have abundant financial resources. That's it. The ultimate measure of riches is the presence of abundant financial resources. But wealth means that you have within your reach the systems that ensure that there is no drought again. The ability to replenish is what translates a man from being rich to being wealthy. You need both of them. If you have the systems alone, your future is safe, but you will suffer now. So you need riches and wealth. Psalm 112. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighted greatly in his commands. He says, His seed shall be mighty upon earth. Then he says, The generation of the upright shall be blessed. He says, Wealth and riches, they are not the same, but they are both needed, shall be in his house. You need abundant financial resources alongside the systems that ensure that your wealth becomes a cycle. Anything that lasts in this kingdom must be in a secular form. Rainy season, dry season, rainy season again, dry season. Anything that does not conform to the law of circles cannot last. Are you learning now? Let me give the last word and we pray. My time is up. The last area where you must contend to see the power of God manifest in your life in order to find rest round about is in the area of quality relationships. Quality relationships. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, we'll read from verse 9 to 12. It says, Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. That means those two people should not be lazy. There's, there is labor there for them to profit themselves. If one fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth, for he hath not another to help him up. Again, if two lie together, they have heat. But how can one be warm alone? Verse 12. And if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him. The Bible says a threefold cord is not quickly broken. Proverbs 13 and verse 20. Relationships are very, very important if you must excel. It says, He that walketh with the wise men shall be wise. So you don't have to be wise yet. You just follow them. Are we together? Here he tells us that wisdom is communicable. You can, the same way you come close to someone and say there are airborne diseases and all of that, he says wisdom is communicable. And he says, but the companion of fools, please keep the scripture, shall be destroyed. You heard me say it. If there are five foolish people around you, you did not count well. There are six. If there are five wise people around you, you also did not count well. There are six. You will always be a reflection of the relationships you born of. Genesis chapter 12 from verse 1 to 4. Let's hurry up. Goodness. Genesis 12. Now the Lord had said to Abraham, Get thee out of thy country, from thy kindred, thy father's house, to a land that I will show you. Who was God speaking to? Abraham. Is that true? And then he, he spoke all these blessings upon Abraham. Let's go to verse 3. Verse 3, Genesis now. And I will bless them that bless you, 
and curse him that curses you. And in thee, one man, he's speaking to one man, shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Read verse 4 with me if you're a Christian. Ready? One, two, read. So Abraham departed as the Lord has spoken to who? Him. And Lot went with him. Stop. God did not speak to Lot. Lot was not part of that project. But Lord said, I didn't hear God, but I will follow the man I know had God. Are we together? Genesis 13, very quickly, we are praying now. Genesis 13 from verse 1. <laughs> and Abraham went up out of Egypt, he and his wife, and all that he had. And Lot again, that's our Lot, Lot with him into the south. Verse 2. Verse 2, very quickly. Abraham was very rich in cattle, in silver, and in gold. Why? Because that was the natural fruit of obedience. Are we together? Verse 3. And he went on his journey from the south even to Bethel, and to the place where his tent had been from the beginning between Bethel and Hai. Verse 4. And unto the place of the altar which he had made there at the first. And Abraham called upon the name of the Lord. And Lot also, which went with Abraham, also had flocks. Look at what the Bible is saying. It didn't say, and, and Lot, all he reminds you that the basis for his blessing was his relationship. And Lot also, he would have just said, and Lot had flocks. He said, no, Lot also, who took the risk to seek value in relationships. He had flocks and herds. You are as wealthy as your relationships. I pray for my people time and again that may you never be so poor that all you have is money. Thirteen verse six. And the land was not able to bear them that they might dwell together. Why? For their substance was great, so that they could not do it. Now, you don't even know who God spoke to and who followed, because their results now were. Yes, sir. These are the mysteries of the kingdom. Verse 7. Unfortunately, there was a strife between the headsmen of Abraham. And the headsmen of Lot. Unfortunately, for sake of time, you would read that Abraham, knowing that the blessing was on him, he said, Lot, choose anywhere. Because it's not your location, it's what is on you. Lot, you are an escort. I am a carrier of something. I give you the benefit of doubt. Choose anywhere. Foolish Lot would have said, I know why God blessed me. It's not because I had God directly. It is my remaining with you that is the basis of my blessing. But the Bible says, listen, the first decision Lot will make outside the influence of Abraham landed him to stay near Sodom. That means the result of Lot was not a measure of his wisdom. It was a measure of the strength of his relationships. By the time Abraham would come to rescue Lot, his decisions kept progressing until he was in the middle of Sodom. Can I tell you this? Be fruitful means be relational. Everything multiplies on the basis of relationships. It takes a man and his wife to have children. That already should teach you that nothing multiplies in isolation. This is the year where you become in intentional about quality destiny relationships don't say we grew up in the same place love everybody but you must select relationships that reflect where God is taking you there are people whose, whose refusal to be transformed will sooner or later become a source of of, of impedance to your advancement and you should love them and say well 
my passion for God, it doesn't look like you are motivated by the same passion. And we can't be on equally you. I love you, but we may not be able to continue this journey together. Are we together? These six areas, if and when you allow the grace of God and the word of God to find expression, you will be surprised that you will look left and right and you will see that God would have sorted you round about. A final recap, your spiritual life, sustaining superior belief systems through mental transformation, your health and your wellness, your purpose and your destiny, your finances, your relationships. Show me a man who excels in all this area and I show you one who has personified what it means to find rest round about. Please rise up on your feet and let's pray. You're going to pray just one prayer and I speak over your life. The one prayer would be that I desire to see the fullness of God's rest. I want to enter that Sabbath. There remaineth a rest. Some of you are doing well spiritually, but the area of embarrassment in your life is finances. Some of you are doing well financially, but it's at the expense of your spiritual health. You can throw away Jesus out of the window, provided you will get money in return. There are people who love Jesus Christ, but they are not able to be, they are not able to excel because when it has to do with mental development, it's almost zero. So you're going to pray. Mention these areas one by one if you can and ask for grace. Obtain grace from heaven. Go ahead and pray. Rest round about. 2022. If someone crying to the God of heaven, rest round about. Rest round about. I obtain grace in the name of Jesus. It says labor to enter that rest. There is a labor dimension in the spirit engaging the word. Engaging the ministry of the Holy Spirit through obedience, stepping into that Sabbath. Go ahead and pray. Lord, I desire to find rest round about. According to Genesis chapter 24 and verse 1, and Abraham was old and well stricken in age, and the Lord had blessed him in all things. In all things. Somebody prophesy all things. All things that pertains unto life and pertains unto godliness. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I see that there's about 10 more minutes to minister to you. Um, I want you to take these 10 minutes very serious. I want to pray for you. One of the things that happens to us... Ah, please bring me the person who shouts now, loud under the anointing. I just saw light. Please bring that person. I saw there is such a move of power. Just pick that person right now. A loud shout to the hearing of everybody. Please let me have your attention. So one of the things that happened... of the Holy Spirit. And power is not just for preachers. And we are not just talking of falling down. The ability to produce God's dimension of results. Are we together? 
until he is glorified through your results, there is a dimension of rest you can never truly have. So, this 10 minutes, I want to pray for you. Something will come upon your life that will transform you like never before. Just pray a prayer in one minute. Father, the grace that is required for the next level of my life and my destiny, I obtain by faith. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. My head towers exalted like the horn of a unicorn. I am anointed with fresh oil. My head, you are exalted. Like the horn of a unicorn, I am anointed in Christ on him. Shalabaratos katebrendege barati. New season, so God. Open up unto your people. New season, new dimensions, new possibilities. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. The first prayer that I want to pray for you, please, we have a few minutes. I want you to bring out those who are under the anointing now as I pray for them. The Lord is telling me He's placing an anointing for exploits in the area of the works of your hands. I'm seeing a grace. There are people who will begin to shift into dimensions, exploits. I decree and declare, take that grace now. Please bring them out. Take that grace now. In the name of Jesus, bring them out. I place an anointing over the works of your hands. Begin to produce extraordinary results. Extraordinary dimensions of results. In the name of Jesus, the Son of God. Extraordinary results. Hallelujah. I'm seeing an eagle, and every time I see that is the activation of the prophetic and the spirit of revelation. There are people here, please, whether you are an usher or not, just help them. I have less than five minutes. I'm going to pray. Some of you are even ministers of the gospel. There is a grace. Listen, the miracle of open eyes, there is a grace that can cause a man to come into a comprehension of the depth of the kingdom. I stretch my hands. In the name of Jesus, I see the number of 24. Take that grace now. Take that grace now. It comes upon your life, men and women of God. In the name of Jesus, I release that anointing upon you. Access to the mysteries of the kingdom. In the name of Jesus Christ. Bring them out, please. Yesterday I prayed a prayer at the island that I'm going to pray here. There is a grace for speed that can bring a man from where you are and grant you access to dominion over time. I want to pray and the power of God will come on so many of you. Please let me have them outside. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare the grace that makes for speed right now. Take that grace. Take that grace. Take a pacos te debata. Prateka de pacos kotoba. Take that grace. I declare speed. Ten years in one year. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Ten years in one year. I prophesy to you in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. Speed in ministry. Speed in business. In the name of Jesus Christ. Help this lady, please. Help her. So she does Hallelujah. Now listen. I want you to receive this prayer. 
There is a grace for influence and visibility. Listen to me. I know what I'm saying. No matter what you do, if that grace is not on you, your territory will never acknowledge the workings of God upon your life. I want to pray for someone here. There is the gate that needs to be opened that leads you to the city. You can be in a city and yet the gate is closed over you. I prophesy a tapos Business people, men and women of God, I open up the gate, the gate for your influence. Ephata, be open. Ephata, be open. The gate of visibility, the gate of influence. Ministers of the gospel, that gate is open now. That gate is open now. Aparez Keteva, Lagos, acknowledge the grace and the workings of God upon the servants of God here is presented. In the name of Jesus Christ. Where thou hast been deserted, so that no man passes through you, he says you shall be an eternal excellency and a joy of many generations. I want to declare prophetically and call to your life the helpers of your destiny. It matters who likes you, sent by God to hold your hand and make this adventure of your kingdom experience easy. In the name that is above all names, I speak over you right now. Whoever has been anointed in this season to hold your hand financially, spiritually, and help you rise wherever they are, by the power of the prophetic, I call them forth now. I I call them forth now. Ministry helpers, arise. Business helpers, arise. In the name of Jesus Christ. Is there any man in the house of Saul that I may show kindness for Jonathan's sake? Anyone already mandated to identify you and show you favor and by some demonic means has refused to show up for your sake by the power of the prophetic, I compel them to send for you. I compel them to send for you. It was the king that sent for Joseph and brought him out of his dungeon. Everyone here under the yoke of delay. You know there is delay in your life where the only thing growing is your age. If the only thing growing in your life is your age, it's a terrible affliction of darkness. But I decree and declare, right now, restoration for you. By the Spirit of grace. Restoration for you. And every power of darkness stand in your way. I come by the rod of the apostolic and the prophetic. I decree and declare, be free now. Be free now. Be free now. As for you and for your family, I appoint your deliverance. I appoint your liberty. Final prayer. There are things that have left your life that should not have left. He said, alas, master, for it was borrowed. And the prophet said, where fell it? I want to prophesy to you. Listen to me. Restoration is a possibility in this kingdom. I decree and declare. Some of you have lost money. Some of you have lost opportunities. Some of you have lost all kinds of things. And you're wondering, saying, Lord, will you lead me this way? That's why he brought you to Winepress. 
I decree and declare by the power that raised Christ from the dead between now and March 2023. Hear me. I speak of one sense of God. I decree and declare let there be total restoration to your destiny. Total restoration to your destiny. Don't wonder how it will happen. You may not see wind. You may not see rain. But I prophesy to you, your valley shall be filled with water. You will not see wind. You may not see rain. But your valley shall be filled with water. Hallelujah. You're trusting God for healing. Just lay your hands on your body. Please give me one minute to speak over your life as I wrap up. All who are in front here, I decree and declare over your life that the graces you have received remain with you. And the obstacles lifted from your life, they are lifted forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please lay your hands. Let me just pray in one minute. Who is Ruth? I'm hearing the name Ruth. Ruth. I hear the name Ruth. Of course, I can, I can presume that there are so many people. Ruth. The lady I'm seeing in my vision, I don't know if it's your hair, plenty hair. This is what I'm seeing. You have like, I don't know if you, there's, you didn't pack your hair. What's your name? Please verify for me. Ruth. Where were you seated? Do you believe in the power of God? Yes, I do. I want to pray for you. What do you do? I'm a digital creator, voice actor. In the name of Jesus Christ. I decree and declare the grace for visibility that I prayed about. That grace is coming on you. And in the name of Jesus, I prophesy to you. By the power that raised Christ from the dead, find visibility. May God connect you to strategic people in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. This lady, this lady, put in your hand on your, lift your hands. I want to pray for you. I just saw light on you. I don't know who you are. Okay. Who is is it Dora or Laura or something? No, no, I'm not talking about you. Is it Laura or Laura? You are wearing like a white, it's not a t shirt. You are a smallish lady. This is what I'm seeing. Laura. I'm seeing you around the minister's stand. Where this is what I'm seeing. Is there someone like that? What's your name, my dear? Laura, come. Do you believe in the power of God? Yes, I, do. I want to pray for you. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. Jesus! In the name of Jesus Christ, this grace upon your life will never go down again. Experience grace and favor given by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, I want to pray for you. What did you say your name is? Stand up. Okay. Huh? I did joke. Okay. I want to pray for you. Who is Deborah? What's your name? Deborah. In the name of Jesus Christ. I will pray. I, you don't have to be there. In the name of Jesus. Look at me. I'm seeing an anointing coming on you. And the Lord is saying that this grace will grant you speed. I decree and declare. May that grace rest upon you right now. And for you, my dear, in the name of Jesus, I don't know you. But I pray that by the power of the Holy Spirit, may God grant you a great visitation. In the name of Jesus Christ, who is the Son of the living God. We have to close. Is it alright if I make an altar call? Can I do that? Hallelujah. I know that our time is fast spent. We have to honor the time. But there are people here, listen to me. Please, no movement. There are people here who are saying, Apostle, 
whilst hearing you speak about rest roundabout, I confess that my spiritual life is in desperate need of the power of God and the grace of God. There are people here who are saying, I need to make Jesus Lord of my life genuinely. I pray for you, you can go back so that you clear the way for those who are coming. There are some of you, this anointing that is on you will last all through this night. You will go to bed and you will have a lot of angelic encounters. Like this woman, Madam, I don't know you, but I'm seeing oil being poured on your head. Help her! And the Lord is telling me that He's opening you up to a new season. This is what I'm seeing. There is a season that is being open to you. So there are people who are saying, Apostle, I need Jesus. I want my life to become a reflection of all that I need to be in Christ. I want to surrender my all to Jesus. And there are those who are saying, Apostle, I once gave my life to Jesus, but as it is now, things are not things are not in place in my life at all. Please, if you belong to any of these categories, I'm going to count one to five. I want you to run like there's fire on the mountain and come and stand. Don't kneel for space. Quickly, one. Let's celebrate them as they come. I'm running, I'm running, I'm running to the mercy seat. Two. Are you coming? Let's celebrate them as they come. Run to Jesus. Three. Please sit back a bit, gentlemen, so that they can have a bit of space again. Run to Jesus. Run to Jesus. He is able to give you a new beginning. Now, before I pray with you, you will notice that the counselors, the counselors are giving you a card. And please do well to accept it. Just make sure that you have one as I lead you to make this prayer. Those who are still coming very quickly, we'll give you a minute so that we'll make this very, very quickly. Hallelujah. Now, hear me, please. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his then only begotten son but today we know that he's the first begotten among we the brethren it says that whosoever would believe in him that that person would not perish but have everlasting life the life of God it is many of you have come here some outside I believe and all the centers who might be following and those following online there are people who are saying, Apostle, I need Jesus here at One Press 2022. I want you to make this prayer. Let it be from the depth of your heart. You're not reciting a poem. Jesus is in this place. May I request that you lift your right hand high above your head. Some of you are crying. Don't be ashamed of your tears. When he comes, he's able to give us a new beginning. He says, as many who would come to him, he will in no wise cast you away. Please say this after me. Let it be loud and clear from the depth of your heart, including those who are at the aisles for for sake of space. I see you, and those outside who probably are the screens outside. The Lord is there with you. Say after me. Say, Lord Jesus. Say it again, Lord Jesus. Tonight, I have heard your word. I believe with my heart that you died for me. I believe that you rose again for my justification. I receive you as my Savior, as my Lord, and as my King. I declare that from today I am a child of God, a recipient of eternal life. I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken 
over my life forever. I go forward ever and backward never. Amen. Keep your heads lifted. Father, thank you so much for these precious ones. They have come even by the Spirit. And Lord, you are giving them new beginnings. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that the power of sin and Satan is broken over your life. By the authority of Scripture, I declare that he gives you a new beginning from tonight. Go forward and excel. Go forward and reign. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Now here's what I want you to do. Please make sure you get the cards. There are counselors. If you are yet to receive yours, just wave your hands. Counselors, please help them. Let's make it fast. When you have these cards, you return back to your seat. Please fill them as, as, um, as legibly as you can. When you are done filling them, do well to pass it to any of the officials you can find so that they can collate this. And please be available if and when they reach out to you. May the Lord bless you and declare that you are blessed in Jesus' name. Please lift your hands for the final blessing as we close. Thank you. Can they return back to their seats? God bless you. Please, you can return back to your seat. Rejoice it. It's a new beginning for you. In the name of Jesus. I lend my voice with every... the name of the Lord. Okay, I'm going to pray the final prayer and I've been given the liberty of a minute or two to allow these people to go back to their seats. I want you to please stand on your feet and pray one prayer that which you desire to see in your life as your request. I'm releasing my faith with you in the name of Jesus. The Bible says for everyone that asketh receiveth, everyone who seeketh findeth, and to him that knocks, he says that the door is open. I want you to lift your voice and ask. Go ahead. He said, ye have not because ye ask not. Go ahead and ask. I'm releasing my faith with you in the name of Jesus, who is the Son of the living God. There are ministers of the gospel trusting God for higher levels in the spirit. Business people trusting God for an increasing, greater relationships, broader horizons. There are career people trusting God for jobs, trusting God for opportunities. Go ahead and pray. Some of you are trusting God to grant you all kinds of rest. I'm releasing my faith with you. Go ahead. Please don't be distracted. Make sure you are praying. There is a God that answers prayers. He says, unto me that answers prayers shall all flesh come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As you have declared, as you have believed, in the name of Jesus, I place a seal on it by the blood. And I declare that everything you have asked, your hands will handle. In the mighty and matchless name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. For you. Hallelujah. Are we ready for God's word this evening? Are we ready for God's word one more time this evening? Hallelujah. All right, please let's watch this video and then we'll bring up the man of God. Hallelujah. The mind of the devil's battlefield. But this vessel has mastered the game. A custodian of deep spiritual insight, busting the tricks of darkness and projecting the truth of light. A man of the spirit with an in-depth understanding of kingdom mysteries and principles. A key of massive life transformation and a vanquisher of weapons fashioned by hell. Prepare to be shot out from where you are to where you are meant to be by the power of the Spirit and the vehicle of His ministration. 
Professors, let's welcome Augustus. Please stand to your feet, have a service at National Christian Center, and let's make welcome an Apostle of God and found out the Eternity Network International. Also, love TV and the legs are not heavy. One Press 2022. Let's welcome Apostle Joshua Stellman. Let it build us tonight. And I pray in the name of Jesus that within the time that we have to share, let the sick be healed. Let the oppressed be delivered. And as always, let Jesus be revealed and Jesus glorified. In Jesus' name I pray. My joy to be here. Thank you so much. Please be seated. Let me very quickly bless and honor the man of God and his dear wife, Pastor Bolaji, please honor him for me and his dear wife. And I want to sincerely celebrate all of the pastors, the leaders, and all who are part of this vision. Let's honor them. Great work. May the Lord bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you. Please be seated. While I prayed and inquired of the Lord on what to share tonight, I had a vision. This is how I want to start tonight. I had a vision, and in that vision, it was um, a room, and I just saw people moving, and they were lamenting, and it looked as though something was missing. This is what I saw in my vision, and they were looking around. And then all of a sudden, light came and the people began to rejoice. And I had the word restoration. This, I want you to believe every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. I'll be teaching very, very briefly on the principle of restoration. And then we'll pray. I trust that as we pay attention will not only learn but that the power and the grace to make that word become a reality in our lives will be released even whilst the word comes in the name of Jesus hallelujah the Bible lets us know that it is possible for men to lose people relationships as we see all through scripture in the Bible people lost loved ones people lost relationships in the Bible it is also clear that people can lose things we see that things were lost in the Bible for instance the story of the axe head that fell is that a last master he was borrowed so we see that people can lose things but we also see from scripture that people can lose time that it is not only men that can be lost it is not only things that can be lost but the greatest loss as recorded by scripture and from scripture is time is that true 
So, God is able to restore people. We see that in stories that depict resurrection. Resurrection is a type of restoration. And then, we see God restoring things. Not just over the lives of individuals, but even over nations. The prophet said, by this time tomorrow... And there was a complete restoration of the economic dignity of a region. But then the Bible also says that in God's dealing with men, He is so mighty that He sustains the power to restore even time. Joel chapter 2 and verse 25. Joel 2 and verse 25. Joel 2. And verse 25, I will restore to you the years, not just the things. You can have the restoration of relationships, you can have the resurrection of things, but let me tell you, real dominion is dominion over time. Because the unit of destiny is measured in time. When you meet a dying man, he will not ask you for more things. When you meet a dying man, his greatest request is time. Because if you can give him time, every other thing can be found in time. Are we together now? When you lose relationships under a certain condition, you can easily have another relationship. When you lose things, people have lost money, people have lost properties, and with time, they got it back. But when you lose time, there is no factor that guarantees the restoration of time again. Are we together now? Yes. Because it is not given unto men to live in the past physically. But God is saying in my dealings with men, I can restore people, I can restore things, and I can restore time. This is very important. I examined the subject of losses. Um, it is a word that people do not want to hear. The moment I mention a loss or losses either to a businessman or someone who just lost a loved one, it's not a word that anyone wants to be associated with at all. Is that true? When you hear the word profit, you hear the word gain. Now, these are words that we like. Nobody wants to hear the word loss or losses. And by the Spirit of God, very quickly, I just want to exhort us. I'm not really doing an extensive exegesis of God's Word, just a charge, really, so that we can pray. A few reasons why individuals lose in life. Please pay attention. Tonight's message can be a lifeline for someone based on that which God showed me. There are a number of reasons. And in as much as every new year, every new season, we aspire for the best of God in our lives and our destinies, if we do not know what makes for a life of defeat and retrogression, we will continue repeating the same mistakes. And you have every new year look like the former year, in spite of the prophetic words. And so God is giving us a chance by His word to be able to ascend through knowledge to a higher realm where our results become predictable. You can know that you are done with losses and retrogression. Are we together now? Our confidence in this kingdom is based on the integrity of God's word. There are two qualities of God that the believer builds his confidence upon. Number one is his integrity. Number two is his ability. These are the pillars of the believer's confidence. So when people ask you, based on what do you think God will not fail you? It is based on his integrity. God is not a man that he should lie. He is not a man. You may have heard it in my teachings that God only became a man, but he is not a man. Are we together? Yes. 
The Bible tells us that men lie. They don't lie because they are bad. They lie because they are men. So he says, God is not a man that he should lie. He is not the son of man. That is the basis of your confidence. It means God only says what he can do. So if you hear God say anything, he has vetted his ability to find out that 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 what he has said it is within his power to make it come to pass are we together now this is very powerful so his integrity and his ability let's examine a few reasons why people experience losses of all kinds in their lives are you learning already number one lack of discernment hebrews chapter 2 and verse 1 let's study a few scriptures as fast as we can Hebrews 2 and verse 1, lack of discernment. It says, therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them sleep. Say discernment. Discernment is very important. Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 3. These are scriptures that show us the danger of not having discernment. Isaiah 1, 3. It says, the ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's crib. But Israel does not know, my people doth not consider. That means these people have not built themselves to be able to discern. We lose in life because we do not know how to discern. The faculty of spiritual perception, the ability to know what God is doing, in these days, if you lack discernment, you will lose a lot of things. It can cost you even your bishopric. He said, his bishopric, let another take. Are we blessed? Ezekiel chapter 12. Let's look at one or two more scriptures. Ezekiel chapter 12, we'll start from verse 1 and 2. Ezekiel chapter 12 from verse 1 and 2 the word of the lord also came to me saying please let's read verse 2 together ready one to read son of man thou dwellest in the midst of a rebellious people it says which have eyes to see and see not they have ears to hear and hear not for they are that is his definition of lack of discernment that you have eyes and yet you do not see you have ears and you do not hear. People lose because they do not have the ability to see and to hear. Very, very powerful. Acts 28 and verse 27. Let that be the last verse for this and then we'll jump to the next. Acts 28 and verse 27. He said that for the heart of these people is wax gross, for their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest they should see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. There is a relationship between discernment and restoration. There is a relationship between lack of discernment and losses. Many people, many believers have not trained their faculty of spiritual perception to discern, discern people, discern opportunities, discern seasons. He says, and of the sons of Issachar, men who had the understanding of the times and that they knew what Israel ought to do. And because of that, their brethren were at their command. Number two. Why do people lose in this kingdom? Carelessness. Number two, carelessness. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 3, where we read. Hebrews 2 and verse 3. Just pay attention to these scriptures and let them speak to your spirit. Hebrews 2 and verse 3. How shall we escape, it says, if we neglect so great salvation? which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them which heard him. How shall we escape when there is neglect, carelessness? Many believers have demonstrated carelessness across every area of their lives. Carelessness with opportunities, 
carelessness with moments, carelessness with prophetic words. Are we together now? Yes. Judges chapter 11. Let's read from verse 30. We are discussing the reasons why people lose in this kingdom. As an attempt to understand the value of restoration. And we said number one is lack of discernment. The absence of it. Number two, carelessness. Are we there? Judges 11 from verse 30. Remember the story of Jephthah? Pay attention. It says, Jephthah vowed a vow unto the Lord. You will see the consequence of carelessness right now. Carelessness with words. Carelessness with commitments. It says, If thou shalt without fail deliver the children of Ammon unto my hands. We are reading to 35. Then it shall be that whatsoever come forth out of the door to meet me, when I return in peace from the children of Ammon, shall surely be the Lord, and I will offer it for, for a bond offering. Say carelessness. This is a man who is speaking carelessly. This, this is clearly emotions. That Lord, if you give me victory, anything that comes out of my house, I will give you as a bond offering. Follow closely. So Jephthah passed over to the children of Ammon to fight against them. And the Lord delivered them into his hands. Are we still here? And he smote them. Even until all of those places. And thus the children of Ammon were subdued before the children of Israel. 34. It says, And Jephthah came to Mizpah unto his house. And behold, who came out? His daughter came out to meet him with timbrels and with dances, and she was his only child. Say carelessness. We lose things in life because we do not allow the Holy Spirit to lead us. People make careless statements, careless commitments, and many of us, the reason why we've not been able to experience advancement and even restoration is because we make careless commitments. Carelessness. Beside her, he had neither son nor daughter. 35. And it came to pass, when he saw her, he rent his clothes and said, Alas, my daughter, thou hast brought me very low, and thou art one of them that trouble me, for I have opened my mouth unto the Lord, and I cannot go back. There are people who make commitments that were beyond their financial level. Emotionally, they just met a family of 10 people and said, I will take care of all of you to university. And the wife said, but how, what is the financial state of the family? Said, and they clapped for you when you spoke it and they captured it on TV. Carelessness, hasty in speech. Carelessness, especially with words. There are people who have said things that they wish they did not say because careless utterances have cost people years, damage control for years. Is someone learning now? The reason why we lose in this kingdom, carelessness, carelessness. In Matthew chapter 14, when you read from verse 6 to 11, I don't know if you can look at it, is, is a parable, the parable of the talent. Remember, he gave unto one five, he gave unto one two, he gave unto Matthew 14. Let's look at it from verse 6. Sorry, uh, that was the story of Herodias. Keep it, let's just read it since you've, you've put it up. The Bible says, when Herodias' birthday was kept, the, when Herod's birthday was kept, the daughter of Herodias danced before them and please who? Are you ready to see carelessness again? Please read verse 7. One to read. Whereupon he promised with an oath to give her... You see how careless people are? How in the world do you stand as a king? Who is responsible for the destinies of many. And simply because a lady danced before you and you were happy. And you made a careless statement that anything. That means if she said get up from that throne. Are we together now? Verse 8. 
And she, being therefore instructed of her mother, said, Give me here John Baptist's head in a charger. And the king was sorry. You, you see it now. That every time people do careless things and say careless things, eventually. Why do we lose in this kingdom? Because we are not thoughtful, we are not guided by the word, we are not guided by the spirit. You see, there are three faculties. Let me teach you this very quickly. I wish I had time. There are three faculties for, by which we interact with this realm and we make decisions. I will start from the third. The third is emotions. It is the weakest of all. Because it vacillates. Number two is reason. Based on logic and principles. It is stronger than emotions. The highest number one is discernment. You see. So we have emotions. We have reason. That is based on principles. Emotions are based on feelings. They vacillate and they change. Reasoning is based on principles. And so there is a measure of stability. But the highest is discernment. Because it is based on the voice of God. It is based on the word of God. Are we together now? That means I can look at your life. And know which of these faculties you have exalted. If I see the vacillations around your decisions. I know that you have exalted emotions above reason and above discernment. If I see that you are excessively philosophical with no honor to the ministry of the Holy Spirit in your life, I know you have exalted reason above emotion and above discernment. In this order, it is discernment, then reason, then emotions. When the devil wants to destroy people, he manipulates them because he's the master of the sense realm to exalt their emotions. The moment you get to the realm of emotions, you are in Satan's domain. He will play miserable with you. Can I tell you this? Both frustration and excitement can lead to emotions. So whether you are responding from a state of excitement or a state of frustration, if you are not careful and you are not guided, you can be careless. This man was excited. And he said, young girl, whatever it is that you want, I will give it to you. And she met her mom and said, mom, look at this offer. And the mom said, finally I have a chance to kill a prophet. And they killed him in a miserable way as though the spirit of God was never upon him. That's the implication of carelessness. Are we learning? Number three, very quickly. Why do we lose in this kingdom? Ignorance of the laws of the kingdom. Ignorance. Ignorance of the laws of the kingdom. In Psalm 82 and verse 5, popular scripture, it says, They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness, and all the foundations of the earth are out of course. They know not. They know not. This is a kingdom that thrives by knowledge. Proverbs 19 and verse 2. Proverbs 19 and verse 2. The Bible says, Through knowledge shall the just be delivered. Proverbs 19 and verse 2. Are we there? It says, Also that the soul... Okay. That the soul be without knowledge, it is not good. I was quoting another scripture. It says, And he that hasted with his feet, seen it. So it is not good... To be without knowledge. Lay your hands on your head in one minute and declare that this year 2022, this is the year you will contend for superior spiritual knowledge. Go ahead and pray in one minute. Make a commitment by God. Make a commitment by His grace. Ignorance of the ways of God. I'm tired of shadow boxing, living my life by guesswork, hoping I am right. You can step into a level of predictability and excellence in your spiritual life through knowledge. It says, Through knowledge shall the just be delivered. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Number four. 
why do we lose in this kingdom? Don't forget what we are dealing with. We are examining why believers lose. Number one, I said, is lack of discernment. Number two, carelessness. Number three, ignorance of the ways of God. Ignorance of the laws of the kingdom. People lose financially because they do not understand the kingdom truths allocated for their excellence on that wise. People lose to principalities and powers and demons and live defeated lives because they do not understand the weapons of victory that have been given to the believer. Just knowing that victory has been purchased for us in Christ does not administer victory to you. The administration of victory is by light. Are we together now? Yes. So just being aware does not bless you. The Bible says in um, Ephesians 4 and verse 18, it says, Having the understanding darkened, being alienated through, from the life of God, through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. It takes knowledge. It takes knowledge. It takes knowledge. It takes knowledge. I commend you to God, he says, and to the word of his grace which is able to build you up and then to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. Are we together? The Bible says an heir for as long as that heir is a child. A child means one who is void of knowledge. It says he differeth not from a slave, even though he be lord of all. Number four. Why do we lose in this kingdom? Abuse and misuse. Write it down please abuse and misuse a major reason why believers lose abuse and misuse just write for reference we may not have the time to go through it matthew chapter 25 when you read from verse 14 to 30 matthew 25 14 to 30 we abuse and we misuse time this was the story of the um uh what they call it now the five the the, the, the three uh, people who, who were given talents parable of the talents one five one two and the other one and you can see how careful and intentional the first two were the last person was careless he went and buried his talent you bury seeds not talents you see that and when the master came he said i know you are a hard man you like reaping where you did not sow. So I thought that instead of wasting your talent, I do you a favor by burying it. Here is your talent. And he called him a wicked and unprofitable servant. Abuse. The word abuse comes from two words. Abnormal use. Abnormal use. People abuse opportunities. They abuse access. They abuse moments. And they lose. Many people have abused access to great people access to great minds we continue to lose because of abuse abuse of privileges remember in second samuel just write it for reference again second samuel chapter 2 well let's read from 12 to 17 but the entire text is from chapter 12 of first samuel first samuel chapter 12 down to chapter First Samuel chapter 2 down to First Samuel chapter 4. This was the story of the sons of Eli. But let's just look at chapter 2, First Samuel 2 from verse 12 to 17. The Bible talks about the sons of Eli. Remember, Hophni and Phinehas. The Bible says the sons of Eli were sons of Belial. They knew not the Lord. Read to 17. It says, And the priest's custom with the people was that when any man offered sacrifices, the priest's servants came while the flesh was in sitting with a flesh hook of three teeth in his hand. Uh -huh. And they struck into the pan or kettle or cauldron or pot all that the flesh hook brought up, the priest took for himself. It was a privilege of priesthood. And this principle still works till today in the body of Christ. Are you seeing that now? There are privileges that priesthood brings, but there can be the abuse of it. To cut the story, the long story short, it was that when the meat or whatever the sacrifice was boiling, you are given the privilege to put that fork and whatever you bring out, it is your own blessing from the Lord. 
But the Hophni and Fini has said, uh -uh, before you boil it, let us clearly look at it and pick. You see that? They kept taking advantage of the fact that their father was a priest. You will see their end. Remember the story Ichabod? When the ark of God was taken, they were also captured and killed. They brought Eli a report and said, listen, your sons are dead. That was not even what disturbed him. They said the ark of the Lord has been captured. He fell down, broke his neck, and that was the end of it. Abuse. 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 And misuse. We, many of us have misused privileges. We have misused opportunities. Have you heard people say, I'm connected to so many people and none of them can help me? Find out why none of them can help you even though you are close to them. You abuse access to their numbers. You call them every time and say, you are not answering me. Have you forgotten we are relatives? Abuse. And, and you know, sadly speaking, Africa, we are masters of abuse. We abuse opportunities. We abuse moments. You have access. There, there is an entitlement mentality. Are we together now? We just believe that someone somewhere owes us to succeed and come and bring a, a, an honorarium from that success. Abuse and misuse. Number five. Why do people lose? The final reason I'll give you is tests and trials. It is true that when we go through seasons of tests and trials, like the Bible shows, it is possible that we lose things. In James chapter 1, from verse 2 and 3, James chapter 1, from verse 2 and 3, here's what the Bible says. Brethren, so he's talking to brethren. He's not talking to they who are outside of faith. Count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, he says. Knowing this, your confidence should be based on this knowledge that the trying of your faith worketh patience. The trying of your faith worketh patience. Are we together now? It is true that when people are going through seasons of prunings and trainings, it's an uncomfortable truth. But it is true that people momentarily can lose things. Are we together? We read all through scripture that people were constrained when David was in the cave of Adullam, running away. He lost several things, opportunities, even though he had people there with him. When Joseph, on account of his, his, his diligence and his, his honor to God and to the integrity of his person, he found himself in the prison he lost the opportunity to be the head even though he was a slave there were privileges that were withdrawn from him so there are times that we go through seasons that on account of the dealings of god in our lives on account of several things it is possible that we can lose some of these things maybe you are a person of integrity in the office and on account of your integrity it's possible that momentarily you can lose a few things. Privileges, opportunities. These are the five reasons I have examined from scripture and from experience why people lose. Let me do a one minute recap. Lack of discernment, carelessness, ignorance of the laws of the kingdom, abuse and misuse, then tests and trials. But I have good news for you. That in the name of Jesus, it does not matter by which means, by the power that raised Christ from the dead, there must be restoration in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now please pay attention. Let me give you by the Spirit about four keys that are responsible for restoration. Are you ready? Number one, the first key that is truly responsible for restoration if you want god to restore moments time or whatever it is in your life the first key is self-examination the power of self-examination
2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 5. He says to examine ourselves whether we be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Examine yourself. Can I tell you this? When people are downcast, they do not take the personal responsibility of saying, listen, why am I here? This is not self-condemnation. You have to learn to sit with yourself. Why are things not working for this family? Why is it that I have been in Lagos for 10 years and have only celebrated the testimony of others? There is something about the responsibility of thoughtfulness that most believers do not submit themselves to. You have to sit down and ask yourself honest questions. The Bible says, examine yourselves whether ye be in the faith. Luke chapter 15 from verse 17. I'll just cut it and start from verse 17. This is a very classic story that, that demonstrates responsibility and the power of self-examination. This is the story of the prodigal son. The Bible says when he came to, he never said the Holy Ghost spoke to him. Uh -uh. You, it is within your power to come to yourself. Sometimes you see pain is a gift. Because it can bring you to a point where you come to yourself. It is true. When things happen too cheap, when you keep reaping harvest for seeds you did not sow. There are many of us who have been shielded by the love of others. And it has never given us an opportunity to examine ourselves. Whether you sow or not, someone's harvest, he will share it with you. And chances are excellent that you can think that because you are receiving a harvest outsourced from another, you don't see the value of seed time, you don't see the value of anything because someone else is shielding you. The power of self-examination. You must learn this. Have a time where you stay alone with God. Lock yourself, go somewhere and say, Lord, I, I, I'm not happy at the way my life is going. Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 1 says, it says through desire, a man, having separated himself, he seeketh and intermeddleth with wisdom. Once you separate yourself, you have separated yourself from foolishness too. The moment you take the pain of separating yourself, it is wisdom you will encounter. Are we together? Yes. Why is my business not working? Why is my spiritual life not working? I've been born again for 10 years, but I barely know anything about the principles of scripture. Why is it that I'm not attentive in church? You have to examine yourself and ask yourself very honest questions. The power of self-examination. Number two, what is the second key that makes for restoration? Brokenness. Psalm 51 and verse 17. Brokenness. Do you know what brokenness is? Brokenness is a state of recognition. Recognizing your inadequacy, your inability to help yourself unassisted. That if God does not come into this equation of my life to help me, my best will still be limited. Brokenness. Many people want God to restore them, restore their dignity and their honor, but that sense of self-righteousness and pride is still alive there. In the story of the prodigal son, listen, the father did not come to meet the rebellious, arrogant son. The father came to meet a son that was already repentant and was ready to be restored. Are we together? Brokenness is very powerful. You walked out on your CEO and you lost your job. You are secretly hoping you will get back to the job. But you do not have the humility to be broken to admit that I was wrong. And somehow you are hoping. It does not work that way. Brokenness is not, um, brokenness is not something you assume. It is a state that everyone around you will know this person is broken. There are many people today, if they were broken enough, they would have re relationships restored 
together with the privileges. If that boy sat down there, the prodigal son, I presume if he stayed one more year in that foolishness, he would have died. Because he was already close to death. He said, How many hired servants does my father have? And I'm here feeding with the swine. I will arise and I will go to my father. And when I meet him, I will say, Father, I have sinned. I won't say, Father, it was just my mind. My mind was playing some emotional games. Call it what it is. I have sinned against you. I have sinned against heaven. The character of brokenness is that it admits without shame. Are we together? Pastor, I am sorry I offended you. This is not the way it should be. It was carelessness. I take full responsibility. That's brokenness. The Bible says a broken and a contrite heart, oh God, thou will not despise. Many, many, many people are unable to experience restoration in their lives because they are not genuinely broken. Genuinely broken. There are many children who would get back the support of their parents, their sponsors, their loved ones, if only they communicate brokenness in truth and in sincerity. Is that true? Brokenness. Number three. What's the third key that makes for restoration? Knowledge. 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 Proverbs 11, I, I believe verse 9, says, Through knowledge shall the just be delivered. Isaiah chapter 60 says, Arise, shine. For your light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. You arise and you shine when your light comes. Knowledge. Knowledge of what? Not knowledge of your situation or knowledge of what you want. Knowledge of what it takes. Listen, most people know what they want. They even know what they don't want. But they do not have the knowledge of what it takes. Is that true? So, this is what I want. I desire this so desperately. And this is it here. The Bible says that this should be given to me. But you must know, have the requisite level of spiritual illumination that takes you from prophecy to experience. Otherwise, you will keep wishing things that will never, never manifest in your life. It takes more than knowing what God has said. It takes more than knowing what God has told you to have it. Is that true? You must find out the, the participatory condition he has connected to that promise. Your acting in keeping with the condition is your demonstration of faith. That faith is not just believing alone. Believing is part of the process of faith. Faith is the name given to the action of obedience you take as a sign that you believe God. I don't know if I've demonstrated it here, but say for instance, I call this gentleman and I say, come and pick this. You see, don't come, but just say you are coming. Say you are coming. Look at this. Shout it again. Say I'm coming. 2018, say you are coming. 2019, say you are coming. 2020, the promise is still there waiting. You have not manifested faith. You've just been wishing that you will have it. And someone will come in 2022, my brother, walk and come and collect it. And you are wondering, where did you come from? Uh -uh. It is the person who took the action of faith. Lord, I'm going to build a house. You've never found out where there's an empty land. You are waiting for your bank account. It does not cost money to go and know where land is. And say, Lord, I have seen the land. And someone who came from nowhere, now the person is roofing his house and you're wondering. Faith is not just saying what God has said. Faith is doing what it takes as prescribed by scripture to make what God has said be manifest in your life. Are we together? Thank you. Knowledge. 
we need high level spiritual illumination let me challenge you i want you to go back home and write a list of all the areas in your life where you have not seen the word of god produce the kind of result that you desire knowing that God is glorified in your results. Remember what the Bible says. It says, let your light so shine before men that they may see. God wants men to see. Because in seeing the results that proceed from you, they will glorify God. Hearing is our Father glorified. John 15 and verse 8. When ye bear much fruit, not little fruit, sustainable, predictable results, brings glory to the name of the Lord. Are we together? Galatians 1.25, it says, and they glorified God in me. They glorified God in me. The excellency of the workings of the word in and through your life, it compels all and sundry to know that Jesus Christ is lifted and glorified in and through your life. God is counting on everyone here as a membership, counting on individuals that through your life, your life will become a living epistle. Someone will look at your life this year and anything he did not understand in the morning, he will look at your life for the explanation. If he, if he read his Bible in the morning and he saw that God was faithful, that God is faithful and he did not get that Bible study, God will tell him, look at this pastor as an explanation, a clarification to what you have learned. That's what it means to be a living epistle. Your life explains what people do not understand about God. When God says that he can favor men, if they say, Lord, I, 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 is it real that you can favor men? He personifies his word, embodies it in an individual so that you become a, a demonstration of it. Nicodemus came to Jesus by night and said, Rabbi, we know that thou art a man sent from God. For no man can do these things except God be with him. There are certain results that are not within the realm of men. When you see men manifest that result, it, it, it was outsourced from a dimension that is higher than this human dimension. And I'm praying for someone here. The frequency of results that you will begin to walk in, you will be the first person surprised by your results. In the name of Jesus Christ. Listen, do not allow anybody downplay the place of results. Your Christian experience will remain a frustrated experience. If you do not have genuine, notable results, Gentiles will not come to you. They will come to your light. Their kings will not come to your light. They will come to the brightness of your rising. Preachers, here, whether in this ministry or those who came, this is the year to contend for high levels of spiritual power, high levels of wisdom, the kind of wisdom that is connected to mighty works. Business people, this is the year to operate at a dimension that your contemporaries will come to you and say, we have discerned that God is with you. Believe what I'm saying. Results are powerful. Results can evangelize. They, there, are, there, are, there are certain messages that only results can preach. The Bible said the Greek seek for a sign. The world is tired of vain explanations from Christians. One genuine result in the name of the Lord can bring to end decades of confusion. knowledge we rise in this kingdom by knowledge there is what you must know there is what you must know 
to reign and to excel. There is what you must know to remain on fire. There is what you must know to access the spirit of wisdom. There is what you must know about kingdom influence. There is what you must know about longevity. There is what you must know about wealth and abundance. There is what you must know about dominion over systems and structures. There is what you must know about relationships. The question is which aspect of your life are you taught? Go back and become a spiritual archaeologist. He said, for everyone that seek it, find it. Jesus gave a parable. We are praying now. He gave a parable and he said, the kingdom is likened to an individual who lost a coin in a room. The coin means a treasure. The power to make purchases was missing in the room. He knew that if that coin is somewhere. The first thing he did was he brought light. The second thing he did was to carry a broom and started sweeping. I know this breakthrough is somewhere in scripture. I don't know what verse, I don't know what principle, but I know in scripture God lives. I know in scripture God restores. I've not understood the dynamics you are sweeping. Sweeping with messages. Sweeping with prophetic words. And the Bible says she found it and she rejoiced. Can I tell you this? Every time you claim you have found something and it does not show in your life, you are yet to find it. I found your word and it was a joy and a rejoicing to my soul. Listen, light is powerful. Light is powerful. When you find this thing, you have found it. Believe me. Listen. You can gain mastery in the spirit. You truly can gain mastery in the spirit. It says, He that strives for mastery is not crowned except he strives lawfully. Move past the realm of trial and error. Shadow boxing and hoping that one thing or the other will work. You can rise to a level of predictability in your Christian experience. That you wake up in the morning and you know you will be favored today. You know. Paul said, but I know whom I have believed. He said, I am persuaded. Knowledge. Knowledge. You must submit yourself through the labor dimension of faith to access knowledge. No matter how great a door is, there is a small key that opens it. And you can put that key in your pocket. But if that key is missing, you can stand before that door from morning till night. But then if you find the key, that is knowledge. You need understanding. Because there are times that you can have the key. And the dynamics of opening that door. Some doors you turn once. Some doors you turn twice. For others, you turn and do some other things. The Bible says, in all thy getting, get understanding. Knowledge tells you what to do. Understanding tells you how to do it. Knowledge says give. But understanding tells you how to give in a way that prospers you. Knowledge tells you pray. Understanding tells you how to pray to get results. Knowledge says fast. Understanding tells you the kind of fast that has been commanded. It's good to have knowledge. But in addition to knowledge, have understanding. Understanding brings stability to your life. My time is up. Number four. The last and then we'll pray. Be sensitive now. I want to pray for you. The fourth key that activates restoration is the prophetic. Someone's life is changing. Isaiah 42 and verse 22. Isaiah 42 and verse 22. Never forget this scripture. 
But this is a people robbed and spoiled. They are all of them snared in holes and they are hid in prison houses. They are for a prey and non-deliverate. Read with me. They are for a spoil and non-stayed restore. Restoration does not just happen. Someone must stay it. Non-stayed restore. Non-stayed restore. In 2 Kings chapter 6, when you read the first seven verses very quickly, 2 Kings chapter 6. This was a very interesting rendition. The Bible says, The sons of the prophet said unto Elijah, Behold, now the place where we meet with you is too small. So they, it was a desire to advance. Next verse. It says, Let us go, we pray thee unto Jordan, and take thee every man a beam, and let us make a place where we may dwell. And he answered and said, Go ye. Verse 3. And one said, Be content, I pray thee, go with thy servants. And he answered and he said, I will go. Verse 4. So he went with them. And they came to Jordan and cut down wood. But as one was felling a beam, the axe head fell into the water. He cried and said, Alas, master, for it was borrowed. Wise man. Many people will try to jump inside the river and die there. No. There are certain results that you cannot just get it by yourself. God has positioned people within the body that in addition and in connection to your faith, this man cried and said, Alas, Master, I'm in trouble. I borrowed this. The prophet said, Where fell it? And he answered, he showed him the place, and he cut down a stick and cast it thither, and the iron did swim. The iron did swim. The finances that left you did come back. Because you see, everything that left you is still on earth. Under a certain condition, it can come back. This is true. Please listen to me. When the prophetic is administered outside the boundary of scripture, it just becomes a display of ignorance with no potency and power. But when the prophetic is administered within the jurisdiction of scripture, it works wonders. Listen to me. My beloved people, there is a dimension of growth and restoration and excellence that only the prophetic can bring to your life. When you lose money, it's not another business that will bring the money back. No. You will only waste your time and keep digging deeper. It is the prophetic that will bring it back. It may look like a physical structure brought it back, but it is the prophetic. The economy of a whole land had gone down. And a prophet said, by this time tomorrow. He gave it the timing and by the morrow, there was restoration. I saw this vision and I knew that the Lord wanted me to teach and charge and prophesy restoration. Listen to me. God can restore men. God can restore things. And God can restore time. Do you know how God restores time? He does not take you backward. He takes what was in your yesterday that should have happened that did not happen. He brings it into your tomorrow. Are you getting the point now? You have to understand how God restores because God does not exist in time. He does not even exist in eternity because eternity is time. It's just time without end. Infinite summations, uh, no, summations of infinite dispensations. God dwells in a realm that is neither eternity nor time. So there is nothing like past, present, and future with God. That reality is only given to men to help us relate with God. There is no such thing as a future. There is no such thing as past. God's realm is now. That's it. So your yesterday is as clear and real to God as your tomorrow. There is no difference. 
Are we together? So he can move something that should have happened in year 2000, 2015. Maybe at that time when that prophetic word would have come, you were not sensitive. God can move it into January and February and make it happen in your life. This is restoration. In one minute, wherever you are, I want you to pray very passionately and cry based on this word. Ask the Lord to bring restoration. Don't waste this moment. Go ahead and pray. All the centers that are following overflows, those following online, here is your chance to contact the grace that makes for restoration. Lift your voice and pray. He barakos kade la kashan de la kashosi behes kedi alas, and I will restore. Shaprate kaska di bala kosti dia. Krante barakatos kadi breti ke la hasia. Someone pray. Kata prate ke de la kosta di prende la hasia da. The praise kedi la sude balakusia. Let there be restoration. Pray. God can restore people, relationships. God can restore things. And God can restore years. Someone is praying, Lord, I've wasted 10, 15 years of my life. I wasted it not being a believer. But now in Christ, I am aware that it is within your power to restore. I call for that restoration. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says, And by a prophet, the Lord God brought Israel out of Egypt. It was the Lord that brought them, but the instrument was the prophetic. It says, And by a prophet, they were preserved. Let me read this one scripture. And then I'll just take two or three minutes to just minister and speak over your life and we'll end with an altar call. Nehemiah chapter 5 from verse 11. Please do not forget this scripture. Nehemiah chapter 5 from verse 11. Restore, I pray you to them, even this day, their lands, their vineyards, their olive yards, their houses, also a hundred part of the money, and of the corn, and wine, and oil that ye exact of them. Listen to that scripture. Someone is making a decree. He said, Restore everything their lands, vineyards, olive yards, houses. Hundred part of the money, the corn, the wine, the oil, verse 12. Then said they, we will obey, we will restore them, and will require nothing of them. So we will do as thou sayest. Then I called the priest and took an oath of them that they should do according to his promise. It was the priest that came to seal it. A command has come, restore. But there must be the priest that says, time, you must make this happen. Restore. Restore my joy. Restore victory. Restore everything. Listen. The Bible says, when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, it says we were like them that dream. Our mouths were filled with laughter and they testified among the hidden. The Lord had done great things 
for them. He says, the Lord has done great things for us, whereof we are glad. Then he says, turn again our captivity like the streams of the naked. I sense in my spirit that there are people here. I tell you, I sense such a strong anointing. We just have about two or three minutes. We are not taking too much time. But I want you to believe in the power of God. The power of God is His currency for purchasing realities for believers. That as a result of this encounter, many of you will return with tearsome testimonies. And will say, I've not seen it in this fashion before. Hallelujah. There are three categories of people I want to pray with very quickly. Very, very quickly. And then I just speak over our lives. Number one. I want to impart the grace for speed. Listen. Truly believe me when I tell you there is a grace for speed. There is an exact grace for speed. That when that grace comes upon an individual, you will know because you will have dominion over time. Dominion over time. Many of us are, are limited by time. Dominion over time. I want to pray for you. I sense such a strong anointing. I'm seeing the number 24. Even though I'm going to pray for everyone. We, we have just, my time is up, so we will not have, we still have a session hopefully tomorrow, either here or any of the centers, but I want you to be very, very sensitive. I want to pray now. There are people you are moving, but your life is too slow. You don't have all the time for that level of slow movement. I want to pray. There are people who will start running by the anointing. Please, I want you to help them. If you can bring them out here, let's have them. I stretch my hands. To the God of heaven. No, no, no. You don't have to come out. Your co the anointing will bring you out. In the name of Jesus. Right now. By the rod of the apostolic and the prophetic. I decree and declare. Bring them out. Paratos kanekatea. Kepre katos. Speed. Take that grace. Take that grace. In the name of Jesus. Who is the son of the living God. I decree and declare. Over families. Over businesses. Speed. 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 Let I see the lucky hear the word of the Lord. I decree and declare over you. Speed in the name of Jesus. Speed in business. Speed in your spiritual adventure. My goodness. May that hand of God rest upon you. In the mighty and marvelous name of Jesus. Bring them out if you can. Just one minute and we're done. Parandes Katila Katosiata. Every delay that has kept you bound so that you want to move forward and you're unable to move forward. In the name of Jesus Christ, I come by the privilege of the election of grace and I declare those chains let you go now. Let you go now. Let you go now. Paros Katipatakosakatea. Speed! Speed! Every closed door that will not let you move forward, I speak to that door. A Ebata, be open! A Ebata, be open! Doors of opportunities in the name of Jesus. Doors of grace. Doors of new seasons. Doors of discernment. Doors of the prophetic. Doors of the apostolic. In the name of Jesus Christ. Everything you have lost that left your life and should not have left, I stand by the power of the prophetic. Between now and the next three months, I call upon my God. Hear me, I'm speaking to you. Everything that left Kapatos Katikata, that left your life, your destiny, in 90 days, by the Spirit of grace, I command it to be restored now. Everywhere the overflows, 
the centers be restored. Be restored. Be restored. Be restored. Be restored. And anyone holding what you get to your hands and has refused to release it, I call upon the God of Jeshurun, the one who rides upon the wings of the wind. Let it be restored a hundredfold. Every pending project that you've started and has refused to be completed. The Bible says the hand of the Rupabel that began this work, that same hand will, become, will, will, will perfect it. I pray 2022, I speak it that let this be your year of completion. What God has started in your life, this is the year you will see it completed. Hallelujah. Final prayer for you. Every destiny helper anointed to locate you and partner with prophecy as far as your restoration is concerned, wherever they are, I prophesy to the north, the south, and the east, and the west by the spirit of grace. I call them to your life now. I call them to Apagos Ketebeleka Kabastia. I call them to your life now. HITC, hear me. I speak to you by the Spirit of Christ. Enlarge to the left. Enlarge to the right. Enlarge to the east. Enlarge to the west. Break forth to new cities. In the name of Jesus Christ. Businesses, break forth. Families, break forth. Ministries, break forth. Career, break forth. In the name of Jesus. That when men say there is a casting down, for you let it be that this year there is a lifting up. Hear me? Everyone who is part of this spiritual family, whether here represented in this branch, across the other branches, connecting from around the world, I speak and I decree and declare, in the name of Jesus, as God has declared to the man of God and his wife, I join my faith with them and I speak. This year, may you see a performance of prophecy. In the name of Jesus, and for all who are out here, I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that everything limiting you, it goes for your sake now. You will go and return with testimonies from this night. Not tomorrow, from this night. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please return to your seats rejoicing. Now very quickly, we're out of time. I want to make an altar call. Listen, we are in the days of His power. We are in the days where it is costly to reject Jesus. Guess what the Bible says. Please look up. Let me have your attention. All the overflows, all the centers following. Please pay attention. There are men and women, you must find them in every meeting ordained by God and of God. Who come there in need of genuine salvation. Others in need of restoration, spiritual restoration. And I believe there are people in this auditorium, all the overflows and all those who are following, you are saying, Apostle, I genuinely need Jesus Christ. Not just as a religious or church thing, I need a functional relationship with the God of the Bible. And there are others who are saying, Apostle, I need restoration. As it stands, I cannot say I'm proud of my spiritual life. I know that I need restoration. Very quickly, we have just a minute for you. Wherever you are inside here, I want you to quickly come and stand before me. I'm going to count one to five. Run like there's fire on the mountain. One. You want to make Jesus Lord of your life? Please don't come arbitrarily. Make sure you understand what you are doing. Two. 
Thank you, oh my Father, for giving us your Son and leaving your Spirit till your work on earth is done. The greatest experience that the believer can have is the experience of receiving the life of Jesus in this encounter that we call the new birth. An exchange of your weakness for his strength, his life imparted into your spirit. For all of you who are in front here, whether making a first time decision or dedicating your hearts to Jesus, please lift your hands high above your head. Say this after me truthfully. Don't play games with God. We are in the days where we need high level spirituality to excel in this life. Some of you are crying. There's no reason to be ashamed. This is an encounter with Jesus. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I love you with all my heart. And I believe that you are the Son of God. Tonight, I come before you just as I am. I ask you to wash me, to cleanse me, make me anew. I believe that Jesus is my Savior, my Lord, and King. And I receive eternal life into my spirit. From today, I am a child of God. I go forward ever and backward never. Amen. Keep your hands lifted. Father, thank you for these ones. They have come declaring your lordship over their lives. And scripture declares that as many who would come to you. Anointed man of God. A man that is on a mission to impact his generation. Now, I will tell you one secret before I allow the technical to do the intro. You are so, so privileged. And I will tell you why. The man I am about to introduce, this month is his birthday. Listen again. His birthday also happened to fall into this week. This week is his birthday. His birthday anniversary. Ordinarily, he does not like traveling, or he doesn't travel out of his base on the week of his birthday anniversary. Because he takes that time to stay back and seek the face of God, you know, and, you know, hear from God. But for your sake. And for my sake. God has brought him here tonight. Ladies and gentlemen. Men and brethren. Put your hands together. For Apostle Joshua Salman. Now briefly, the technical team will do a brief intro. Amen, amen, amen. Please be quiet. We will take the intro and then the man of God will be coming forward to bring God's word to us tonight. And I'm trusting the Lord that someone here will go home with a major testimony. You are that one shout a loud hallelujah. hallelujah. Technical, over to you. God bless you. A chemical engineer. A pastor. A psalmist. A conference speaker. And a televangelist. Highly sought after. The founder and senior pastor of Eternity Network International. E and I. 
the convener of Koinonia, a place where people come to experience worship, the word, miracles and love. Experience true intimacy with the Holy Spirit. Learn to be with Him. Be like Him. And represent the fullness of God's life on earth. A worshiper and lover of God's presence, and as well as an end-time general, who unites the body of Christ with a prophetic mandate as well as an apostolic calling. To take us to another level in glory, please join us as we make welcome. God's choice son, Apostle Joshua Nimark. opportunity to really truly appreciate Pastor Emmanuel. Thank you. Thank you. And your dear wife, I sincerely appreciate you for this time. Please let's honor them. Let's celebrate them. Thank you. Hallelujah. And then I want us to, in the same vein, even though our fathers and our senior pastors have been recognized but i'd like us to please stand one more time and just honor the fathers we honor you sirs the pastors in the name of jesus christ amen it is please let's have some silence so that we are able to hear the word of the lord praise the name of the lord do you believe in prayer? Can we just lift our hands and our voices to heaven and ask the Lord to visit us tonight? The Bible says they go from strength to strength as many as appear before the Lord in Zion. Go ahead and pray. You are my hiding place. You always fill my heart with songs of deliverance. Whenever I am afraid, I will trust in you. I will trust in you. Let the weak say I am strong in the strength of the Lord. Father, we are gathered tonight as proof that we trust you. We are gathered tonight as proof that we love you. We are gathered tonight as proof that we believe in you lord i pray that in this conference you will visit us tonight in a mighty way let the sick be healed oh god let the oppressed be delivered oh god may your fire fall in this place and i pray in the name that is above all names that as the word of god comes our ears, our eyes, and our hearts are open to receive. Amen. Jesus, we declare that you be glorified tonight. For in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you and please be seated. By the way, is it alright if I just use a few seconds to really bless and wish Pastor Emmanuel, a very, very happy birthday. Let's honor him. Thank you. Amen. We love you. We honor you. And we celebrate what God has done and is doing. And our prayer as the body of Christ is that you will go from glory to glory. In the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you, sir. Thank you. Amen. Amen. 
while I was praying for this meeting this morning I had a very interesting vision and in that vision I saw it was like Ezekiel 37 and I was given a picture of what was happening whilst Ezekiel you know his encounter bones began to come to bones and one of the things that the Lord spoke to me from that vision in this meeting is that this night many many people will be stepping into strange restorations please I want you to believe it believe it with all your heart that there are things that have left you for some of you decades by the power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead that God is bringing them again to your life Joel chapter 22 please let's get to the word I'd like you to be sensitive be sensitive Sing hallelujah Sing Just help those under the anointing please Sing hallelujah to the Lord I'm just seeing the smoke of his presence across his face Sing hallelujah Sing hallelujah Sing Christ is risen. Sing, Christ is risen. Sing, Christ is risen from the dead. Spirit of the living God, we pray that whilst the word comes, move in our midst and let it truly be that this was a night of encounter in the name of Jesus Joel chapter 2 from verse 25 Joel chapter 2 from verse 25 and I will restore to you the years that the locust had eaten the canker worm the caterpillar the palmer worm my great army which i sent among you and ye shall eat in plenty and shall be satisfied and shall praise the name of the lord your god that had dealt wondrously with you the last statement says and my people shall never shall never let me use this opportunity to speak that everything that followed you here representing shame and representing reproach i stand upon this altar in the name of jesus who is the son of the living god may shame and reproach be rolled away forever May shame and reproach be rolled away forever. The Bible says, And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. That was his end. But at the beginning, the Bible says, Because the mother bore him in sorrow, She named him Jabez. But a time came, he was angry. He said, It's time for me to go forward. Oh, that thou wouldest bless me. And enlarge my coast again oh let me speak over someone it may be that there are limitations that have followed you for years in the name of Jesus Christ who is also the lifter of men I prophesy to you everything tying you down so that the only thing moving is your age nothing else is moving in your life I command let it be broken now be broken now be broken now, be broken now, be broken now, be broken now. When 
he called Lazarus out from the grave he gave an instruction he said lose him and let him go let me speak to someone here whatever has tied you in the name that is above all names by the power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead I declare be loose now be loose now be loose now be loose now please sit down the Bible the Bible lets us know that in our walk with God please pay attention there are systems of advantage that can be introduced into the life of a believer that gives him an edge over life and over circumstances are we together now in the dealings of God with men and captured all through scripture from Genesis to Revelation we see that there were men who were under all kinds of circumstances but that somewhere along their lives a system of advantage was introduced into their lives and it began to change the narrative of their lives here's what the Bible says for we know that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and those who are the called according to his purposes why is it that all things can work for good because regardless the situation and the circumstance in God's economy he sustains the ability as the El Shaddai to introduce what I call systems of advantage there is nobody's life that is in advantage by default are we together now yes the first of that system of advantage being salvation that when you come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ according to the authority of scripture the Bible says that there is a translation from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's dear son then the Bible lets us know that you become a partaker of God's life that is the first system of advantage that comes into your life John 10 10 the thief cometh not but for to steal to kill and to destroy the Bible says it says but I am come that ye may have life and that you have that life more abundantly are we still together but then there are other systems of advantage that are spiritual arsenals that God had made and put in place for believers so that no matter and regardless what happens in your life by the introduction of these systems of advantage you eventually emerge victorious it is it is on the strength of these systems of advantage that we show the all-surpassing dominion power of the Christ so that regardless my background regardless what it is that happened or did not happen in my life once I come to Christ there is no such thing as too late because there are sufficient spiritual arsenals that can be introduced into the life of a believer to begin to correct even age-long anomalies are we together now an example of these systems of advantage is the mercy of God one of these systems of advantage is the favor of God one of these systems of advantage is speed and acceleration all these are provisions that were captured in the economy of God to the intent that when and if any man decides to walk with the Lord and begins to grow through knowledge you can access these truths and then the reality of the divine life start speaking because you engage these things there are people for instance who come from backgrounds where they are saddled with all kinds of yokes and curses and by default these individuals become victims 
of life victims of situations and circumstances and even if they get born again there are still constraints that their lives constraints in their lives by reason of the advantage the devil had there has to be a way of correcting that anomaly are we together now there are people who by reason of activities of witchcraft did not have the privilege say to go to school early and to move forward early so already by default they are already retrogressed and delayed in life is there a way that god can help those people to catch up in destiny oh yes there is the name given to that mystery is called speed that god can take the 10 years that were wasted and transfer it into a man's future and make it happen in one day are we together now listen when we say we are victorious we are not just saying it because Jesus died and resurrected just religiously. We are saying it because we are aware of the spiritual arsenals that the death, the burial and the resurrection of Jesus has provided for the believer today. It is on the strength of these truths that we make our boast in the Lord. Are we together now? Yes. So we know that we are victorious we know that in spite of what happened or did not happen a woman may be barren for five years ten years even 20 years if that woman gives birth to a child yet thank god for the child but time has gone if she's to give birth to four children one by one by one by one at what age will she be done giving birth so when god gives her quadruplets he did not just give a child he carried years and brought it in nine months are, are you seeing that now i'm saying this because tonight there is something that is about to happen to someone here in the name of jesus the son of the living god that the things that have 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 been um a, a disadvantage to your life we have come to introduce a system of advantage into your work that will begin to so change things that those who knew you will say is Saul when has Saul also become one of the prophets please sit down hallelujah are we together once upon a time Moses went to meet his half-brother Ramesses who had now become the pharaoh of Egypt to advocate the exodus of God's people and they came out of Egypt and he began to pursue them they stood before the Red Sea there was no provision to move forward again Egyptians behind the sea in front by what architectural mechanism were they going to build a system of safety to cross over everybody says systems of advantage and in Exodus chapter 14, when you read from verse 13 and 14 and 15, Moses had a strange encounter with God. He said, fear not. Moses is speaking now, a visionary leader. He said, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he show you today. For these Egyptians whom ye have seen today, you shall see them no more forever. Listen, as at the time he was saying this, he did not even know the dynamics of how it will happen all he knew was that the lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace then verse 15 the lord said to moses wherefore criest thou to me he says speak unto the children of israel that they go forward hold on how do i go forward when i know that a sea can swallow anything i hope you know that it was not just that the sea parted the gap the land had to rise to their level to be able to walk because even if the sea parted it would still be a depth that they would not cross listen carefully just help those under the anointing now and then moses received that instruction and when he stretched forth his rod the Egyptians saw a dimension of God they had not seen among any of the gods of Egypt. 
the God who with the breath of his nostrils he parted the sea like doors heater and teeter and lifted land to their level on dry ground when they cross over Pharaoh attempting to cross over was swallowed by the sea Miriam was too grateful she sang a song she said I will sing unto the Lord for he has triumphed gloriously even the horses and his riders have been thrown into the sea one time they became hungry very hungry and God said I want to show you the systems that are available in this kingdom manna not seeds for you to sow there are times God can give you seed and wisdom to sow but there are times the urgency requires bread you don't have the time to start sowing and waiting for harvest God can send both seed and he can give bread he can give seed to the sower but he also can give bread to the eater it is true that God can give you a job and you can start saving for five, ten years. But there are times that God can give you the keys to a house in one day. It is the same God doing it. Please pay attention. Then they stand in front of Jericho. A fence so fortified, the Bible says five chariots could stand on it. Imagine a fence. That five chariots could stand on it. Even if it collapses, it's still a fence again. And Joshua was led to introduce another system of advantage. The Bible says Jericho was shot. Nothing could come out of it. Nothing could enter it. And they went round singing praises every day once. And on the seventh day they went round. And he said, when you hear the sound of that trumpet, that you lift up a shout. And the Bible tells us that the walls of Jericho, it did not just fall, it sank. The power of God. And one of these systems of advantage tonight that the Lord wants to introduce is called the mystery of restoration. Ah! The mystery of restoration. Please look up. Scattered through scripture, the Bible tells us that men can gain things, but also men can lose things. Is that true? We see that people lost things, even believers lost things in scripture. For instance, Saul, the son of Kish, they lost their donkey, the father's donkey, and they went looking for it. Jesus himself in giving his parable helping them understand the system of the kingdom spoke about the parable of the lost coin so we know that it is not unusual for things to be missing it is not unusual for us to lose things but then the bible gives us another interesting angle to it that men can lose things but men can lose time the loss of time according to scripture is truly what we call loss if you lose things you can get it back but when you lose time because destiny is measured in time write it down the unit of destiny is time that means whatever you give your time to you give part of your life to whatever takes your time has taken a part of your destiny are we together now? The unit of destiny is time. And so there are times you can lose things. Sadly, after the pandemic or during the pandemic, many people lost money, many people lost jobs, many people lost businesses. So we know that men can lose things. But it is more deadly when you lose time. When you meet a dying man and ask him what is your greatest desire, he will not say more houses. He will not say more land. The greatest request of a dying man is more time. Isaiah 38. 
the bible lets us know that hezekiah was sick unto death and isaiah came to him and said put your house in order god has brought a word you will not recover from this sickness the bible says isaiah turned his face to the wall and his prayer was a request of time time from the human standpoint is irredeemable when it passes it doesn't go back it only goes forward and that means whatever can eat up your time has taken a part of your destiny so when the Bible says I will restore the years you need to understand the gravity of that miracle restore years how do you restore years when a man gets born again at 40 respectfully speaking and at 50 yes he's done well to get born again but in truth as far as destiny and impact and fulfillment of life is concerned time is gone you will need to introduce this system of advantage in your life is that true yeah. restoration is a very powerful mystery to restore means to take a person or to take a thing to its original position where it would have been if there were no constraint listen carefully there is a difference between restoration and progress let me have two people can i have two gentlemen two well-dressed gentlemen please come let me use you for an example just two and that's fine we have this one more person watch this now I like to teach illustratively so that you will understand now this is what i want you to do walk together all right walk slowly now these guys are at the same pace in life and destiny are, are we together now they are going to walk towards me but along as they walk i'm going to make one of them to be delayed and then eventually i'll ask him to start coming i want to show you the difference between progress and restoration are we together now walk gently gentlemen so born on the same day and now for whatever reason stop moving can you see this is where he would have been so he's behind now now keep moving this is progress not restoration because he will never still catch up now let me show you what restoration is when god picks him and brings him here do you understand that now so that when you look at his life you cannot find the gap that delay created again i prophesy to you again in the name of jesus christ everything that has represented delay in your life here at this conference may my god push you forward in the name of jesus christ thank you please sit down please sit down So it is true that we can lose things the concept of losses is a concept that we do not want to hear anything about not in business not in, nobody wants to lose losing is dangerous no one wants to lose a loved one no one wants to lose money no one wants to lose honor no one wants to lose respect no one wants to lose your valuable why do we protect our cars why do we protect our homes because we hate losses let's discuss the subject of losses for a while is god helping someone there are five reasons why people lose in life remember we are teaching on advancement but we have to deal with the subject of delay and retrogression there are five reasons from scripture why men lose number one very quickly the first reason why people lose in life is because of lack of discernment write it down please the lack of discernment lack of discernment can cause you to lose hebrews chapter 2 and verse 1 we'll walk through a few scriptures hebrews chapter 2 and verse 1 the bible says therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard lest at any time we should let them sleep remember jesus was giving us the parable of the sower is that true and he said the seed is the word of god the soil being the hearts of men and he said for all the soils seeds were sown 
but satan came immediately and he caused losses and for those that satan came they were the ones who did not pay attention to produce understanding from their hearing genesis chapter 28 and verse 16 very interesting rendition this just a background for that scripture very quickly this was jacob remember the bible tells us that jacob came to a place called loss and he laid a stone for to sleep in the night are we bible students and then the bible says while he slept he saw a ladder he had a dream and he saw a ladder that connected the earth and the heavens angels were ascending and descending but do you know none of them were coming to him they were moving close to him taking messages to those who were calling them and he was there and never partook of that angelic activity and when he woke up verse 16 please he made a very instructive statement he said surely the lord is in this place and i knew not i did not discern that i was not just lying down on a floor that there was an altar here my father had a covenant with god i came close to the place of covenant he would have blessed me he would have lifted me but lack of discernment did you know that one of the highest indices according to scripture that measures maturity is the ability to discern strong meats the bible says are for them who are of full age is that true who by reason of use have exercised their senses to discern discernment is powerful the faculty of perception this comes through prayer this comes through study of scripture this comes through exposing yourself to the atmosphere of the holy spirit in these end times you need discernment if you do not want to lose your bishopric to lose your destiny it takes discernment are we still together the first reason why people lose we are dealing with the mystery of restoration lack of discernment number two the second reason why people lose in this kingdom is carelessness 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 is the second reason why we lose revelation chapter 3 please and verse 11 revelations 3 and verse 11 it says behold i come quickly hold that fast which thou hast that no man take thy crown you can lose your crown Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 3. Hebrews 2 and verse 3. Please give it to us. Hebrews 2 and verse 3. The Bible says, How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? Negligence, carelessness. Many people have lost precious things because of carelessness. They have lost valuable destiny relationships. They have lost opportunities. For instance, how many young people had the opportunity, they heard that a job offer was there at a platter of gold. Their uncle said, send your CV. And they carelessly assumed that the job will always be there. Carelessness is dangerous. We must obtain grace tonight to fight carelessness like you fight the devil. You can lose things. You can lose years because of carelessness. Number three, are we still together? The third reason for losses in this kingdom is called ignorance of the laws of life. Ignorance of the laws of life, comma, the laws of destiny and the laws of the kingdom. Ignorance of the laws of life, the laws of destiny and the laws of the kingdom. Psalm 82 and verse 5. Listen. This world operates by laws. There are laws of life. There are laws of destiny. There are laws of the kingdom. Your ignorance of those laws can cost you so many things, including your life. Let me give you an instance. Someone can decide right now to end his life by going to stand in front of a moving train. Is that true? He violated the laws of life someone can be part of a bad relationship that leads him into destroying a precious destiny that's violating the laws of destiny 
But there are people who can give themselves over through ignorance. And the devil can take advantage of them and destroy and waste their lives. Ignorance. Listen, this is a kingdom that operates by light. It takes spiritual illumination. High level illumination. Psalms 82 and verse 5. The Bible says they know not. Neither will they understand. It says they walk on in darkness. And all the foundations of the earth are out of course. The next verse says, I have said, Ye are God, and all of you, not some, are children of the Most High. The tragedy is in the next verse. But ye shall die like mere men, and fall like one of these princes. Ignorance is costly. We must contend for light. We must contend for spiritual illumination. Is that true? It was this passion for light to supply spiritual intelligence to the body that made Paul to make that statement he made in Ephesians chapter 3. Please give us Ephesians chapter 3 from verse 2 and 3 then we'll jump to 9 and 10. 2 and 3. If ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given me for your sake now to you word how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery as I wrote afore in few words. Now when you go to verse 9, he was granted grace. What is the grace? The grace is to make all men see. To open the eyes of men. Take away ignorance. And verse 10 is the reason. To the intent that now to the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. Dominion is the resultant effect of the comprehension of the principles of the kingdom dominion is not an impartation there is no anointing in scripture for dominion dominion is the resultant effect of your comprehending the ways of god we have beautiful media people here doing an excellent job of coverage while i teach they are operating by knowledge not their size not their gender it is the level of illumination they have as far as this activity is concerned we must contend for mastery and fight ignorance like we fight the devil are we together number four is god helping us we're discussing losses because when you want to make advancement advancement happens in the absence of situations that retrogress or impede you to the degree to which that impedance is taken away that is the degree to which it can be said you are advancing number four the fourth reason for losses is abuse and misuse the fourth reason why people lose is abuse and misuse matthew chapter 25 from verse 14 jesus is teaching now and he's teaching about what we have come to know as the parable of the talents follow carefully for the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country says who called his own servants and delivered unto them goods so he gave them something and unto one he gave five talents to another two to another one the bible says to every man according to his ability not according to his love for them at the end of this parable you see he was correct for that allocation 17. the bible says let's go back to 16 25 verse 16. 25 verse 16 help us media we're still discussing the parable then he that had received the five talents he went and traded with the same and he made them other five talents and likewise he that had received two he gained also two the tragedy now 18 but he that received one went and did what dig the earth and hid his lost money you bury seeds not talents talents are not for the ground Talents are for multiplication. You sow seeds. The earth is for seeds, not for talents. And yet this man took something that was supposed to be, he was supposed to do business with it. At 
abuse and misuse is one of the reasons why people lose when the owner of the talents came back to demand accountability in his arrogance he said i know you are a hard man you like to reap where you do not sow and so i thought to do you a favor i buried it here is your one talent and he called him a wicked and unprofitable servant he took that one talent and he gave it to the one who had proven faithfulness in stewardship the bible says moreover it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful are we still together tonight abuse and misuse it was dr miles munro of blessed memory who said when the purpose of a thing is not known he said that the abuse of it is inevitable the word abuse is an abbreviation for abnormal use when a thing is not used within the boundary of its purpose is called abuse are we together so a quick recap before i mention the last point the reasons for losses in life number one lack of discernment number two carelessness number three ignorance of the loss of life the loss of destiny the loss of the kingdom number four abuse and misuse number five tests and trials the fifth reason according to scripture why men lose it can be it may be because of tests and trials job chapter one please from verse nine the bible clearly gives us a a biblical rendition of the life of this man called job the bible testifies that he was a man who feared god and eschewed evil please give us verse 9 follow carefully as i read then satan answered the lord and said does job fear god for nothing hast thou not made a hedge about him and about his house and about all that he had on every side Hast thou not blessed the work of his hands, my God? So Satan can give this kind of testimony about a man. Satan is testifying before God that I came close to a man and I found that man so fortified. Both him, his house, and his endeavor. Next verse. Now put forth your hand and touch all that he had and he will curse you to the face the lord said unto satan behold all that he hath is in thy power only upon himself put not forth your hand so satan went forth from the presence of the lord sin two tragedy strikes on earth now and there was a day may that day never come to your life but for this man there was a day when his sons and his daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house that means they were responsible children the elder brother was already established and something happened there came a messenger unto job and said the oxen were plowing the ass is feeding beside them be patient and the sabians fell upon them and took them away yea they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword and i only am escaped to tell you imagine this kind of news next verse while he was yet speaking there came another and said the fire of god is fallen from heaven and had burned up the sheep the servants consumed them and i only am escaped to, to tell you while he was yet speaking my god there came another and said the chaldeans made out three bands and fell upon your camels they have carried them away yea and slain the servants with the edge of the sword and i only am escaped to tell you as though that was over he was yet speaking there came another and said this one is not just animals again now your sons and your daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house and behold there came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house and it fell upon the young men and they are dead and i am escaped alone to tell you two more verses then job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshiped and 
and worshipped after such a news next verse please we're finishing at 22 and said naked came i out of my mother's womb and naked shall i return thither the lord gave and the lord had taken away blessed be the name of the lord 22 hallelujah and in all this job sin not nor charged god foolishly listen to me there are times in your life and my life i know this is not a popular message but there are times that events can happen around your life to the end that the worship of things and your connection to things be broken god's obsession is not to take away things from us he desires that we prosper but there is a problem when those you see the thing with things is that they also want to be lords so when they come to your life they don't remain where you kept them they also begin their manifesto in your life to ascend to a point where they take god's throne there is a system for managing those things god enthrones himself in your life by withdrawing from your life everything that tries to be him so if it is your intelligence if it is your uncle your connection there are people who come to church and while they are saying understand faith they are laughing but they don't really care because there is an uncle who are giving them assurance whenever you are ready you come and just when you are ready the uncle relocates to canada let me tell you what happens to you when you come for service under that condition whether there's praise worship or not you will lie down on the ground that's the real day you will start learning faith because at that point now you are being forced the human spirit is stubborn it does not easily bow to the lordship of christ not in the presence of things not in the presence of many the Bible says it this way. Apostle John was teaching us in his epistles. He says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. The word love there is the Greek word eros. It's an affinity, an ungodly affinity that can affect your relationship with God. There is a jealousy dimension of God that will not share accommodation with every other thing he created. It's an exclusive position so whilst he blesses you with prosperity increase fame anointing whatever it is he doesn't have a problem with you having those things but there is a side effect to men who have not been worked upon by god it does not mean you are bad it's a weakness in humans you must pass through a season in the spirit where god steps back and allow those things that have attempted to be savior and lord and el shaddai you see the futility of them outside of the influence of god the end is not to destroy you see when you are passing through this season with god it looks like he's nonchalant over the things you are losing he's concentrating on your training because when you do learn restoration is still possible so while you are saying god are you not seeing what is leaving me he's saying in my world not yet, there's no such thing as something living i am working on you there are people who stand and brag based on their certificates, based on their uncles, their aunties. Did your Bible not say some will trust in horses, it says. Some trust in chariots. But we, we who have been cultured to understand, we trust in the name. That anything minus the name of the Lord is a disaster. It's only a matter of time. A man can vow and say, come and meet me tomorrow and get a contract. And between that night till the next day and Ahitophel comes to him and gives him a counsel and by the next day he says I can't remember telling you such a thing listen believers it is true that there are times that tests and trials can cause us to lose things albeit temporarily James chapter 1 Apostle James was teaching us from verse 2 are we still learning james james chapter one apostle james is teaching us he said my brethren so he's talking to believers in christ he's not talking to the heathen my brethren count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations support your confidence with this revelation knowing this there is something you need to know 
that gives you confidence in the midst of plenty and in the midst of nothing the instruction to carry all your money and bring to church you brought the money and sold and told by the next day the heavens will open and for one year you are now living from hand to mouth he does not hate you he's teaching you faith there will be a recompense so that you can stand holding an account with one billion and yet it's not in your heart jesus is still lord that is the morale of the training can i tell you this i came here sensing in my heart that within your region there are people who have lost things and even lost time there are people as soon as you finish school you wanted to get a job like every other person god says stay back and everybody is moving forward and even you you don't know the name of what you are doing with god god what are you doing with me can i tell you this you must understand that when god is silent his silence is a language every time god is silent he's saying you are in the school of the spirit don't be embarrassed you will cry it's true you've often heard people i hope god is blessing you tonight there are fathers of faith here veterans of the gospel your fathers in the land you ask them they will tell you their journeys they will tell you they will there, there as a man of god there are times you will be going through things yourself you will counsel others and you will receive a word for them but for you a word does not come and yet god will demand obedience and compliance you pray for someone and there is an open door but there are bills waiting for you and you are saying god i'm serving you faithfully i'm teaching you what the silence of god is saying you are in the school while you are crying heaven is clapping and saying don't give up because the bible says let us not be weary in well-doing it says for we will reap well-doing is a seed is god speaking to us there are various reasons can i tell you this <laughs> Blessed be the name of the Lord. In Genesis chapter 40, don't turn there, just write it for reference. The Bible talks of a prison. Look up, please. Joseph and the wine presser and the baker met in one place. The name of that place is the prison. The prison is where both good and bad people meet. Don't judge everybody in the prison. They are there for various reasons. There are some who are there because they defaulted. But there are some who are there because they are being made to become saviors. The prison is where both good and bad meet. The cross is where both Jesus and the thieves meet. Be careful when you judge people while they are going through seasons. You do not know the reason why they are going through it. Are we together in that same prison there was joseph the righteous there was the wine presser the butler the defaulters they were all there the way to the throne is the cross the way to sit over egypt is to pass through the prison let me speak to you many of you admire greatness you admire great people i want to tell you there is a mystery that not many of them will tell you sincerely look beyond the crowns and the glamour there are scars that are testaments of endurance they lost to gain if you want to gain in this kingdom you must be prepared to lose losing is how we gain are we together because you will not appreciate restoration until you understand the idea of losses there are people right now who have lost things you lost a job because of your integrity you made up your mind you will not compromise you will not bribe and you lost not every loss is proof that god has left you there are losses that are scars of honor symbols of endurance is god still with us tonight let me give us three keys for restoration and then we'll pray someone's breakthrough is coming now please pay attention keys give us access as big as a door is it's a small key that opens it 
How many of you have stood before a giant door simply because a key that could enter your pocket was missing? You stood before that door helpless. As adult and mature as you are, a small key was missing and it kept you grounded. Keys are powerful. They can open great doors, even ancient doors. Number one, what is the first key for restoration? Please pay attention. Number one, the first key that leads to restoration according to scripture is called self-examination. The power of evaluation, the power of self-examination. You want restoration in your life, your family, your business? Self-examination. 2 Corinthians 13 and verse 5. Help us media. 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 5. Read with me please if you're a Christian and you can see it projected. Ready? One to read. Examine yourself, it says. Uh -huh. Whether ye be in the faith. The instruction is examine yourselves to examine yourself means to find a place and sit down and engage in deep contemplation there are many people who pray but they do not think thinking is a miracle the bible says god is able to do more than what we ask or think you've heard me say it in my teachings that both your prayer and your thinking are warriors there is a prayer warrior there is a thinking warrior god answers all the requests they bring to him you can pray well but if you do not think well you may never come out of certain tragedies the psalmist would write a song and he would write under sila pause and think deeply is that true the bible encourages believers to think to sustain times of deep contemplation for instance in philippians chapter 4 and verse 8 it says finally brethren whatsoever things are true honest just pure lovely are of good report if there be any virtue if there be any praise it says think on these things self-examination luke chapter 15 popular story we we'll read three verses from verse 17. Luke 15 from verse 14. This was the story of the prodigal son. Please keep the scripture there. Just as a background, let's go to verse 17. Okay, well, keep it from verse 14. Remember the young man who had access to his father's wealth, but he wanted ownership. Is that true? And the father gave him. He did not think well. If he thought well, he would know that access is better than ownership because access you have you have the abundance to you minus the responsibility of maintenance but ownership you have both access and the responsibility of maintenance in this kingdom we don't own anything owners are rebels we are stewards my car my house my children then you maintain it in this kingdom we have access from genesis you may freely eat but it's not your own but the the carnal man wants it in his name ownership the young boy had access but he wanted ownership father i'm of age let it be in my name luck started when access switched to ownership and the young man went as a result of his careless thinking his life deteriorated he lost everything are we still together to a point where someone who was in a place of royalty was now feeding with the swine 14 please and when he had spent all there arose a mighty famine in the land and he began to be in want we're reading to 20 and he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country and he sent him into the fields to feed swine what a what a decline and he would not feign and he would not fain have filled his belly with the hosts that the swine did eat and no man gave unto him and when he came to himself the bible did not say the holy ghost spoke to him the bible did not say a counselor advised him it is within the power of the human spirit to sit down and say why is my life like this 
Listen, let me tell you, there, there is, for many of you here, this is already a word for you. Don't allow yourself to just keep growing old and things are just happening. You need to sustain the power of contemplation. I say, Father, why am I always in lack? Why am I always fighting? The seed for an answer is a question. You do not deserve an answer until you have a question. Is that true? For someone here, you need to sit down and think, why am I failing in this business? Lord, you gave me a ministry. Influence zero, doctrine zero, salvation zero. Something is wrong. The Bible says, be still and you will know. There is a level of knowledge that comes when you are still. Our generation sadly is a busy generation. Thank God for technology, but if not managed, it can be the demon that distracts you out of advancement. Is that true? All kinds of things clamoring for your attention. No. Champions and great people, those who make advancement in life, are people who understand the power of deep contemplation they lock themselves you are a visionary leader millions are depending on the ideas and the decisions that come out of that contemplation you cannot be jealous you cannot be rash obtain grace in jesus name to sit down quietly some of you after this conference you may just need to go excuse everybody out of your house or your room or your office and just sit down quietly no television no radio no internet Holy Ghost, I'm here. There has to be a way out of this. Speak to me. Go and ask inventors, ask champions, ask visionary leaders. Ideas are better in the place of contemplation where they sit quietly. There has to be a way to this business. There has to be a way to raise this capital. There has to be a way to ministry. Spirit of the living God, I open up my faculties to your influence. And whilst you are there, suddenly from heaven, something comes and graduates you to victory for the next 10 years. Are we blessed? The power of self-examination, the power of contemplation. This is the first key to restoration. Number two. The second key that leads to restoration is brokenness. Psalm 51 verse 17, brokenness. Because there are times you notice out of the five reasons I gave you, five reasons for losses, four of them are reasons that authorize Satan to come and destroy your life. So when you want restoration, Psalm 51, please, and verse 17, there are times you need to be broken. Brokenness suggests taking responsibility. Brokenness suggests saying, look, the way things have gone around my life, there may be need for repentance. There may be need for openness of heart. Lord, I repent. You spoke to me in a dream. My pastor gave a message. I ignored him. I ignored the instructions of the authorities over me. There must be need for brokenness. The young man, when he came to himself, here's what he said. Let me show you what brokenness is. How many hired servants has my father? And I am here feeding with the swine. Here is brokenness. I will arise and I will go to my father. I cannot advance into prosperity, but I can advance to the man who can help me. There are two levels of advancement. Advancement to God, then from God, advancement to destiny. You cannot advance to destiny when you have not advanced to God. When you find yourself in defeat, don't advance to money. Don't advance to fame. Don't advance to a blind restoration. There is only one person who deserves your advancement. I cannot go back to my wealth. I cannot go back to my reputation. But I can go back to my father. God is speaking to someone here. You were once on fire. You once loved God. Now it looks like you have lost everything. You were once a visionary businessman. Until you joined some so-called club or association that just derailed your values. It may not be easy to get that business back overnight. 
but there is a father who is waiting for you notice the bible never said the prodigal son met the father at home the father already started moving too he will not meet you at your mess but you will not meet him at home too you will meet him somewhere at the point of your obedience i will arise he says and i will go to my father when i see my father i will not just shake him and say hi dad mm -mm. i will say father i have sinned against you and against heaven i am not worthy to be called your son he says but take me as one of your servants when the father saw that there was brokenness already he didn't even talk to him about the issue again he held him and embraced him and restored the signet ring a symbol of royalty you are now back to my fold listen to me every time you lose in life businessmen hear this when your business crashes and everything goes down don't say i'm looking for money to go back <laughs> There is only one person you go back to. Father, Abba, the source, the sustainer. Until you sort it out with God, you cannot go back anywhere. You used to be a man of God on fire. Now you backslid in prayer life zero, word life zero. You're not even sure you are saved. You don't go back to ministry. You go back to Father. It is from Father He reallocates you to your inheritance. Is somebody learning now? We are dealing with restoration. Genuine biblical pathway that leads to restoration. It cannot be in the absence of brokenness. From self-examination to brokenness. Lord, I'm sorry. I was not a faithful tither. I was not a giver. I did not support your house. You gave me two billion naira. I misused it. Jumped around with psycho fans who promised to be there. Now everything has gone bad. Don't say the ideas are still in my head. It's just to get a loan. I assure you, you will recycle that pain again. Life is a patient teacher. It can repeat the lessons for as long as it will take for you to learn. Are we together? What do you gain in the place of brokenness? A contrite heart. What do you gain in the place of brokenness? You reprioritize God above everything. I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever, Lord. Let me show you the position of brokenness. This is it. Yes, I know you are a CEO. But life brings you to a point where you are no longer ashamed. When your knees can touch the ground, then your head can wear the crown again. When your knees can touch the ground in brokenness. Samson was one person who lost his estate in destiny. Let me show you how that restoration happened. His eyes, his symbol of light had been taken away. And while they put him between two pillars to mock his God, he prayed one prayer. I may not have the opportunity to live again, but oh God, even in death, give me the honor and the privilege of valiance. Let me do much for you. And they did not realize that while they were laughing at him, his hair was coming back. Can I tell you this? Rejoice not over me, my enemies. No matter what happened to your yesterday, I bring you a word of hope. Jesus died, but he only died for three days. Let me encourage someone here. Yes, your prayer life has gone down. Yes, I know things may have gone down. It may have been your fault, your carelessness, wrong associations, mistakes. But let me bring you a word of hope. At the scent of water, at the scent of water while you are laughing at jesus who died there is an angel leaving heaven to come and open the grave while you are laughing at the dead jesus he did not die forever he only died for three days he only died for three days and while they were laughing at the one who died an angel came 
the hymn writer says up from the grave he arose with the mighty triumph for his foes he arose the victor from the dark domain and he lives forever with his saints to reign if christ arose you can arise did you hear what i said businessman hear me man of god hear me those following from whatever nation watching hear me there is hope in this kingdom one of the systems of advantage is that no matter what goes wrong once there is brokenness you have planted the seed for continuity of your destiny can i give you an advice great leaders no matter how bad people are if you find genuine brokenness i show you people who are still usable but no matter how good people are if you do not find brokenness that is a disaster only waiting for time of all that Saul was he was broken when he fell before that light who art thou Lord he said I am Jesus whom thou persecutest you cannot kick against the bricks and his heart was open when Peter denied Jesus he was broken even the judas you talk about judas was so broken he did not spend the money brokenness is powerful it vetoes your fasting it vetoes your prayer you can fast you can pray you can walk in church if there is no brokenness you cannot go far with god I think we should turn this into a prayer in one minute whilst you are seated cry to the god of heaven lord grant me a broken spirit the pride and the arrogance that is rebellious towards god give me the malleability to repent the ability to not be ashamed that when there is a default in my life and my destiny and my losses come as a report card letting me know that i need to retrace my steps Pain is a letter from your future to your present warning you that you need to make adjustments in your life. If someone prays, please pray. Be like that prodigal son tonight for some of you. Hallelujah. Now listen to me listen to me i still have two more points and then we're going to pray but at this juncture my spirit is fired up and i want to make an altar call you are here and you've heard me speak and whilst you heard me speak the holy ghost began to tell you it's time to win this war of destiny tonight there is nothing to be ashamed of running to jesus is like running to receive an award not running to a funeral hear me there are people up the balcony across the aisles and maybe even outside online following you know that the first restoration you need is jesus christ nobody will force you but i believe with all my heart there are people who need to make it right or there are others who say apostle i remember giving my heart to the lord but the way my life is now things have gone haywire wherever you are as i count one to five as our father will always do i like you to leave your seat wherever you are and please run and come and stand here unashamedly you are standing before jesus one are you celebrating them champions cathedral come and stand before jesus the god of your salvation please stand for space stand celebrate them as they come it's time to win that war is this how you celebrate salvation here okay those outside you can create a space for them outside because of that those outside hear me please those who are coming from outside let's have some ushers or counselors just create a space for them where they can stand keep coming come to jesus come to jesus come to jesus
Are you coming to Jesus? I have to pray for you before we continue. I love, I love. I love your presence. I love, I love. I love your presence. I love, I love. I love you, Jesus. I love, I love. I love your presence. I love, I love. I love your presence. Listen. Look at me. My brothers and my sisters, some of you are crying. Don't be ashamed of your tears. Rebels don't come to Jesus. Rebels run away from Him. So that you have come to Jesus who is the Lord of your salvation. I like you to know that you are not a rebel young and old for some of you you've been having dreams the Holy Spirit has been speaking to you for some of you he carried you and brought you here do you know why more than just making heaven there are destinies that are connected to your obedience he brought you here to make you if Billy Graham never got born again in that crusade ground there are millions today who would not make it because of him if Reinhard Bonke never made it to Jesus can I tell you this many of you are here like the prodigal son tonight it is within your power to come to yourself and make up your mind I'm tired of this kind of thing I cannot waste the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross can I tell you this every one of us including myself had to stand before the Lord of our salvation to make this decision this is not a funeral you are standing before Jesus the only thing I want you to do is to mean seriously what you are saying don't come and stand here just because of emotions let it be from the depth of your heart the Bible says whosoever will come to him he will in no wise cast away listen to me my brothers and my sisters you are here because there is a beautiful destiny Yes, because you leave, Jesus, I leave. I have no fear of what tomorrow brings. Because you leave, Jesus, I leave today. I leave to pray. Take my body, my soul, my spirit, breathe on me. Take my body, my soul, my spirit, breathe on me. You are the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost. You are the Holy Ghost. Take your place, take your place, take your place. Hallelujah. Now listen to me. Don't be ashamed of your tears. Your father is here. Like the prodigal son, when he came to his father, the father embraced him. I am still Abba, your source your sustainer please lift your right hand high to the heavens above your head and i'd like you to say this after me passionately jesus is here for some of you in your tears and your prayer is the salvation of millions for some of you in your tears and your prayer is the finances that will fund the gospel in these end times there are apostles here and prophets and evangelists and pastors and businessmen and politicians custodians of the destinies of many take seriously the decision you are making say after me lord jesus say it again passionately say lord jesus tonight i have heard your word like the prodigal child 
I have come to you just as I am unable to help myself but I believe in your love I believe you died for me I believe you shed your blood for me I believe you resurrected for me tonight I make Jesus my Savior my Lord and my King I receive eternal life into my spirit I also receive the abundance of grace even the gift of righteousness and I declare that from today and forever I go forward ever and backward never amen keep your hands lifted father I present to you the ones Jesus died for Jesus when you hung upon that cross these ones together with all of us were worth your death your blood like trophies we bring to you Abba these ones who have come back home according to the authority of scripture I declare your sins forgiven and I declare that the power of sin of Satan of hell and of the grave is broken over your life I commend you therefore to the ministry of the word and the ministry of the Holy Spirit that is able to make you and mature you and to make you a useful battle axe in the hands of the Lord every guilt every shame every past leaves you now and leaves you forever in the name of Jesus Christ Amen and amen. amen. Now, very quickly before I, they're returning back to their seats. Okay, now this is what I want you to do, all of you. The teaching is still on, so even whilst you are there, please lend your attention. But there is a, a counselor waving the placard just turn to the back, and you will see him. What I want all of you to do is just follow him together in concert as we clap for them. There will be a group of people very briefly very briefly they will attend to you and you'll be back to your seat let's celebrate them champions cathedral is this the best you can do no shadow you will light up mountain you will climb up coming after me no wall you won't keep down, lie you won't tear down, coming out to me. Sing it one more time. There's no shadow you won't lie up, mountain you won't climb up, coming out to me. No wall you won't keep down, lie you won't tear down, coming out to me. Hallelujah. Can we take the third key? Just help those who are crying. Can we take the third key? Whilst you are taking them, counselors, just help them. Let's make it snappy so that they can be back because we are soon to pray now. The third key is knowledge. The third key that controls restoration. Are we still together? Shout hallelujah. So number one, the power of self-examination, self-evaluation. Number two, the power of brokenness. The third key that controls restoration in this kingdom is knowledge. Proverbs chapter 11, please, and verse 9. Help us, media. Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 9. The Bible says, An hypocrite with his mouth destroyeth his neighbor. The beepard says, But through knowledge shall the just be delivered through knowledge shall the just be delivered this is a kingdom that operates like I said it earlier operates by light is it possible is it possible to have excuse me is it possible to give the new converts the forms and then they can fill it on their seats and then when I'm done praying, I can still request that all of them get back. Will that be fine? Will that be fine, sir? 
or well anyway just i just thought so that it doesn't bring any distraction praise the lord let's continue knowledge everyone say through knowledge shall the just be delivered one more time through knowledge shall the just be delivered there is a relationship between knowledge and victory there is a relationship between knowledge and deliverance there is a relationship between knowledge and restoration the same way ignorance leads to losses knowledge can lead to restoration isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1 a scripture i love to quote so much here's what it says arise shy why for your light is come not that your light is available it's always been there but when it comes to you it sustains the power to make you arise and to shine for your light is come and the glory of the lord is risen upon you i wish we can have the amplified rendition the amplified says let me quote it for time it says arise from the depression and the prostration in which circumstances have kept you it says rise to a new life arise from the prostration the depression that circumstances have kept you rise to a new life oh beautiful we have it here it says be radiant with the glory of the lord why for your light has come everyone say my light has come prophesy it over your destiny my light has come prophesy it over your family my light has come light is powerful is it not light that turns night into day what did your bible say about the night that weeping is related to the night time it endures for the night it says but joy it ties light to joy for as long as there is night in your life weeping continues but the moment illumination light comes to you then you arise in joy you need to pant after knowledge knowledge of the ways of god knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom you must access wisdom by light scripture says talking of wisdom by me kings reign and princes decree justice it says it says with me are riches wealth and honor yea durable riches and righteousness job 29 the exploits of job job was recounting the basis for his victory what was responsible for him being the greatest man in the east please give us job 29 the first four verses are we still together tonight moreover job continued his parable and said oh that i were in the months past he says as in the days when god preserved me when his candle everybody say light when his light shined upon my head and when by his light i walk through darkness there are two kinds of light you need to advance the one that shines on your head and the one that shines on your path the one that shines on your head is for knowledge the one that shines on your path is for direction job said this light was on my head and was on my path for he says as i was in the days of my youth when the secrets of the lord were upon my tabernacle in fact let's extend a bit go ahead and read when the almighty was yet with me and my children were about me when i washed my steps look at the fringe benefits of access to light i washed my steps with butter the rock poured out oil rivers of oil uh-huh he says i went out to the gate through the city when i prepared my seat in the street what happened the young men by reason of this light they hid themselves and the aged ones stood up the princes refrained talking and laid their hands on their mouth ten the nobles held their peace and their tongue cleaved to the roof of their mouth when the ear heard me it blessed me and when the eye saw me it gave witness to me just stop there the exploits of light you want advancement and even restoration it is at, it's at the mercy of the lights that you have this beautiful auditorium is well lit both your led screens the tvs and then the auditorium why because there's sufficient light if you put a candle here it's not light enough to turn the night into day you need high level spiritual illumination are we together the last key 
that controls restoration is the prophetic hmm. Isaiah 42 and verse 22 the prophetic was given by God as an instrument of restoration Isaiah 42 please pay attention we're about to pray we're about to pray Isaiah 42 and verse 22 media help us let's read together can we read ready one to read but this is a people robbed and spoiled uh-huh they are all of them snared in holes they are hid in prison houses they are taken for a prey and none say it delivered for a spoil and none say yet restore restoration must be spoken to happen it says they are taken for a prey and there is no prophetic voice that can speak and say restore restoration second kings chapter 6 and verse 1 a classic expression of restoration hallelujah someone's life is about to change and the sons of the prophet said to elisha watch this now behold now the place where we dwell with thee is too straight or small for us let us go so this was an intention to go forward but something happened are we together let us go we pray thee unto jordan the place of breakthrough and take thence every man a beam and let us make us a place there where we may dwell and he said go ye when he gave that instruction one said be content i pray thee to go with thy servants and he answered i will go so he went with them and when they came to jordan they cut down wood the bible says but a tragedy happened listen carefully now but as one was felling a beam the axe head fell into the water and he cried and said alas master i am in trouble i've lost something now my sincere intention to go forward has brought me trouble and that axe was borrowed watch the prophetic the man of god answered and said calm down you are safe the prophetic is still within your reach where fell it ha, the lord is speaking to someone where fell the relationship where fell the favor where fell the open door and he showed him the place please keep the scripture and he cut down a stick and cast it in theater and the iron did swim and he said take it up to thee and he put down his hand and took it i will restore through the instrument of the prophetic an axe head heavier than water but under a certain condition i i i prophesy to someone in the name of jesus christ the son of the living god you now see what happens when our father Baba Deboye would stand and say in the name of Jesus, casually speaking, everything you have lost, let it be restored. And people say, Amen. And people return with testimonies and say, my child who has been missing for 10 years, let me tell you this, I know that the prophetic may have been abused here and there, but when the prophetic is administered within the balance of scripture, it is powerful no man can rise beyond a certain threshold until the prophetic lifts you i tell you this i had the honor and the privilege of meeting our father again not too long and when he was praying and speaking over my life i knew it was coming from the depth of his heart He sent everybody out of the room and began to speak from the depth of his heart. I knew he was not just advising, he was programming realities. Can I tell you this? 
as powerful as Jesus is, he walked under a closed heaven for 30 years until a prophet opened his heavens. Your Jesus was under a closed heaven for 30 years until he met a prophet called John the Baptist. Even if you are a midwife, when you are pregnant and you are about to give birth, another midwife will have to help you. Hear me? This is where the arrogance of our generation has pegged men. You can respect yourself, but you cannot honor yourself. Honor is conferred by another. Fire is about to fall in this place. Listen to me. Many of you have lost. Please take it hard for me. Listen carefully. There is the prophetic word that I want to bring and then we'll pray. I will not take too long. We'll be done shortly. Please be sensitive now. I just sense angelic activities in this place. Nehemiah chapter 5 and verse 11. Nehemiah 5 Champions Cathedral The city of Wari South of the Niger Hear the word of the Lord He said restore I pray you to them even when even when are you reading with me not tomorrow restore even this day their lands their vineyards their olive yards their houses a hundred part of the money and of the corn and of the wine and of the oil that he exact of them listen please look up Every time, many of you are businessmen, many of you read economies, there is always, whenever there is a taking, it leaves someone and goes to the hand of another. Is that true? Who did your breakthrough, when it left you, where did it go? Because the Bible says when you catch a thief, he doesn't only restore, he restores tenfold. Ezekiel 37, I was taken, was still buttressing on this prophecy. This is the prophetic word the Lord gave me tonight, Nehemiah. But hear me, the hand of the Lord was upon me. We are reading Ezekiel 37. He carried me out in the spirit and set me down. And he showed me a valley full of bones. Bones means they were once an army, but something happened. He caused me to pass by them. They were very many and they were very dry. That means they had been there a long time. Verse 3, he said unto me, son of man, champions cathedral, can this business leave? Can this family leave? Can this anointing be restored? The prophet was honest. He said, Lord, with this situation I'm seeing, only thou knowest. And then she spoke to him, and he said to me, prophesy. He said to me, prophesy. He said to me, prophesy. Verse 5. Cause breath to enter you so that you will live. Verse 6. Beautiful. And I will lay sinews and I will do all of these things. Go to verse 7. That's what I'm looking for. He said, prophesy. And this verse says, so I. He said, deliver. So I. I'm here today because God sent me. If he says, prophesy, then we must prophesy. If he says, restoration, then we must decree it. Are you ready to pray? Father. I step into everything I have lost. Everything that has left me, left my family. Lift your voice and pray. Spiritually, financially, in ministry, in business, in career. Are you praying?
are you praying? Inside, outside. RCCG Champions Cathedral The City of Worry Lift your voice and declare De la Parus que parite catabarusia Que brante que te le que te bracata Restore Restore the grace Restore the favor Restore the lifting Someone is praying. Someone is praying. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My God, my God. But thou, O oh Lord, had a shield for me. My glory, you lift my head. But thou, O oh Lord, had a shield for me. My glory, the lift up of my head, but now, oh Lord, had a seal for me, my glory, you lift my head. I like you. Please listen. Listen. There are few, we have a few minutes. I don't intend to delay us, especially because of our fathers. But the hand of God is upon me now. Praise the name of the Lord. Hear me. There are people here, and I'm seen by the Spirit. There are people here. There are yokes that have tied and kept individuals. Listen to me. And families. The Bible declares that now the Lord is that spirit. And that where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There are individuals here, the only thing growing in your life is your age. Nothing else is growing. I want to pray for you right now. Listen, as I pray for you, the power of God is going to come upon you. We may not be able to do that for everybody, but I want you to bring them out here. Let's just have a few ushers, whether you are an usher or not, just join them. There's a reason I want to pray for them. We can, because this night, except God is not God, that whatever has held you down, in the name of Jesus, it must give way. Are we together? I stretch my hands right now. At the count of three, I declare that anyone here under the sound of my voice who has been tied down by witchcraft, tied down by all kinds of yokes, I join my faith with the fathers of faith and in the name of Jesus at the count of three I want you to shout that name Jesus don't come out at random don't come out at random the power of God will bring you out in the name of Jesus just bring those under the anointing one two you shout Jesus three be delivered right now by the power of the Holy Spirit I decree and declare under the anointing Jesus the name 
that is above all names. Bring those under the anointing. Let them go in the name of Jesus. Let them go. Release their destinies. Release their destinies by the power of the Holy Ghost. Every plot that is not of God, I come by the rod of the higher priesthood. Let there be deliverance now. Let there be emancipation now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Listen, I'm praying for you. There are families. Zechariah chapter 1 from verse 18. It says, Son of man, what seest thou? And he said, I saw four horns. 19. He said, These are the horns that have scattered Judah. Your praise scattered Israel. Your covenant scattered Jerusalem. Your peace. There are horns that fight families. I'm praying again that every power sitting on anyone's destiny, you're going to shout that name again. In the name of Jesus, be delivered now. 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 Release families. Release destinies. Release families. Release destinies. Release families. Release destinies. We cost you by the God of heaven. We cost you by the God of Joshua that rides upon the wings of the winds. <laughs> Hear me. Please listen. If there is any family here that has been tied down in one position, as I declare upon you, I'd like you to begin to receive and say, I'm moving forward. I'm making progress. I declare right now, every family that has been tied down, in the name of Jesus, go forward. Go forward. Go forward. Go forward. Go forward. Go forward. No delay. Go forward. Restoration. In the name of Jesus. Let hope. Let it rise. Darkness trembles in your holy light. Hope is rising in this place tonight. Hear me. Listen. All of you who are in front here. Listen. Hold on. Everyone in front here, I declare. That everything that has tied you by the God of heaven, I command it to leave you now. Leave your family now. If you are in business here, lift your hands. I want to pray for you. Alas, master, it was It was borrowed. In the name that is above all names, everything that has tied you down to bring reproach to the name of the Lord upon your life, I stand here upon this exalted altar and I declare to you, come out of every death now. Come out of every loss now. Come out of every death now. Come out of every loss now. I speak to you, advance, advance, advance. Go forward, advance, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now listen to me please. Just two, three minutes and I'm done. The Bible speaks about a man in the book of Esther called Mordecai. Mordecai once saved the life. There are two people who did well. 
but were not rewarded in scripture number one was joseph he helped the wine presser to interpret his dream and he said when you are restored please tell the king i'm innocent the man added two years to joseph's pain a man's memory a man's forgetfulness can multiply your times of pain until god as an act of his mercy brought a dream to pharaoh and the wine presser said i remember my wrong the second person was mordecai he saved the life of ahasuerus the king over 127 provinces and mordecai was not rewarded but when his time came the bible says that night could not the king sleep i'm saying this because god is about to open the book of remembrance hear me there are some of you who have been part of the success story of many people you have contributed to the rising of many you have helped to take shame out of many but you have been forgotten in the name of jesus i bow my knees to the god of my covenant don't kneel down i'm the one kneeling down i pray for you between now and the next three months if god be god be remembered in the name of jesus be remembered in the name of jesus be remembered in the name of jesus that night could not a hazard of sleep and he said bring me the chronicles when they brought him the chronicles he saw where mordecai saved his life and yet was not rewarded and he said who is in the chamber haman was there and he said what shall be done to the man who does this haman thought he was the one and so out of the abundance of his selfishness he gave a recommendation he said do that immediately can i speak to you there are some of you who are at this conference it looks like you are nobody's ignored but i stand by the grace of god and i declare may what happened to mordecai happen to you hear me the bible says let god arise and let his enemies be scattered when haman coordinated the honor of mordecai he returned back broken to his wife and he said wife look at what happened to me and he said uh -uh. mordecai is a jew esther is a jew you are in trouble he said this one has come to get you because there is a covenant that protects them can i speak to you anybody that has mocked your god and fought your covenant may what happened to her man happen to them in the name of jesus christ i want you to go back home today with this consciousness that the lord has restored to me both things and years you are barren here trusting god for the fruit of the womb i want you to not just expect one child expect twins expect triplets in the name of jesus christ and may i lend my voice with the pastor and the leaders to encourage you please do not miss tomorrow morning session for anything it's a conference it takes a sacrifice but every session is worth your while and worth your coming open up your heart and ensure that you are around and invite as many if there is no space if you have to climb the roof climb and sit there in the days of jesus christ everybody who came had something to go back with for tonight may the lord bless you may the lord honor you in the name of jesus you will not need to tell people you came to church the testimonies that begin to happen will tell people that you met god in the name of jesus christ god bless you and see you tomorrow